Like, right. black was up a pawn. Yes, white had the more advanced queenside pawn. You know, the rook on the seventh rank is really annoying here. But, yeah. you know, when queen d6 move is played, like, you can capture this on d6 probably, and then just try to kind of hold for a draw. Uh, many of these end games where, you know, you trade one, you need to trade one pair of rooks and then make a draw that way. But perhaps he was yeah. worried about the consequences here and played this with queen a5 instead of allowing any sort of trade. Um, yeah. So here comes the ambulance. As soon as this game is over, the match is over, the ambulance has come for the you gotta clean up, yeah. Because here, that rook is lost. Alrighty, Iman, it looks like we are finally live. It's not Saturday night, it's pretty much Tuesday afternoon, but the action's underway. Iman Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen. Iman, I'm thrilled to be with you. How are you doing today? What's up, Robert? It's uh, nice to be on the co-cast with you. I think we, we haven't really had our, our moment uh, casting together, so I'm very excited for today. I am as well. In fact, it is our first time doing commentary together. You know Danny always steals me as his partner, but the action is underway. So we have plenty of games to go to. Um, let me know where you want us to start, where to take us. I'm going to pull up the lineups for today just so everyone knows yeah. what's going on. Um, we have, this is the Central Division, and we're going to see four matches. We're going to see the Baden-Baden Snowballs versus the Berlin Bears. And as you can see on the graphic here, these are the lineups for each team. It starts off with board one playing board four for the opposing lineup. And then they end up meeting board one versus board one, board two versus board two, three, three, and four, four. And in the other two matchups, this is the Amsterdam Mosquitoes, Marseille Migraines. And then we see the Barcelona Raptors versus the Ljubljana Turtles. The Turtles made it to the uh, semifinals before being knocked out last year. And the Norway Gnomes without Magnus Carlsen this year playing the Khan uh, Blitzstream. So let's call them Blockbusters because that's what they used to be. That's what they used to be. But just like Blockbuster, they are no more. And I love how the Norway Gnomes, their team, the names of their players just grows, right? It's Orientari on board one, ending there with Torbjorn Ringdahl Hansen. So it's just a growing length of uh, yeah, letters. Yeah, a, a nice little staircase there. <laughs> well, let's see if a stairway to heaven can indeed occur today in these matches. And, well, I guess we should start off with MVL. Is that where you want to lead us? Yeah, I think, I think that's where people want to want to see the action. It's nice to have uh, Maxime Vachelagrab back in action in the, uh, the Pro League. 2019 edition, and uh, he's he's leading the uh, the Marseille Migraines team uh, against uh, Amsterdam this round. So let's check his game out. 
Okay, he's got the black side of this position. Of course, he just put his knight on h5, trying to get into the f4 square, maybe even throw in, oop, I put in gf5, a g5 push at some point if his knight on h5 isn't hanging. And Amon, you definitely, you know, have good experience in these types of positions. Black is a bit cramped, right? We see that the pawn on d5 does well to limit some of black's pieces. Okay, no pieces going to c6 or e6, but at least white has a little bit more space. It's all about the timing of when to go f5. So for the people who may not be so familiar with such setups, how do you determine when the right moment to play f5 is? Yeah, well, obviously you've got this knight on h5, which you know usually you want to bring into f4 because the queen on d1 always adds a little bit of pressure there, which makes it a little bit hard to play f5. Sometimes if you play f5 and you have to recapture with a piece, uh, white controls the e4 square, he gets the planted knight, like knight b1, knight e4, uh, knight b1 to c3 to e4. Uh, the other the thing that's kind of unique about this position is that uh, you don't often see a king's indian type of structure with f5 coming where the rook is actually like way on the like both rooks on the queen side i'm not used to that right right because this rook on c8 typically is over there on f8 or in the other rook maybe on e8 so that when you push f5 you could actually get an attack going <laughs> right yeah no this rook on c8 and rook on a8 are they're, they're missing the action they're, they're kind of wondering like how how to get involved because if you play uh f5 in a position like this first of all the knight on h5 is loose so you probably have to do what you mentioned, something like knight f4 first and then f5. But uh, knight f4, oh, he plays f5 right now. I'm really surprised by that. But I think he's thinking tactical here. Right. Is he thinking something like e4? Exactly. If pawn takes f5, there's e4 opening up that bishop on g7 to the rook over there on a1, which would be a nice tactical shot winning some material. But after this game continuation f5, I assume knight b1 to c3 is a very mm -hmm. logical and natural continuation. Just plugging uh, that diagonal, right? So now there's no threats with e4, and e takes a 5 can be the next move from white if black doesn't play f4 first, which looks like a pretty good move. Yeah, probably knight, I mean, after knight b1 to c3, then then you're, you're facing e takes f5, which I don't think he's going to want to deal with. Um, although f4 takes away the square from the knight, probably he's going to transition that into something like knight c3, f4, uh, if f3 to, to give the bishop some room then g5, bishop f2, and black will, will sort of say, okay, there's not really anything happening on the queen side, so, you know, knight f6, h5, g4, let's go. Yeah, it's a king's Indian attack, and it seems kind of free at this point because black has clogged the queen side. Typically, white gets that queen side in central pressure, right? b4, c5, sort of bayonet attack style. But with the knight on a6 and the pawn on c5 and a5, White's not getting b4 in anytime soon, so I'm actually, I'm actually starting to like Black's position, and not just because it's MVL with the Black pieces. Right. Yeah, no, this this looks like, uh, I think the pawn on a5, pawn on c5, and the knight on a6, they do a really good job of controlling the b4 push, and the, the only other sort of queenside source of, of anything that I see is like a knight a4 to b6 maneuver, but uh, I'm not sure how much uh, stock I, I put in that, because we can probably just shift the rooks but maybe maybe he's got to go for something like that because otherwise uh you know we're not getting to play e takes f5 and yeah black just played f4 so there's not really any active plans for white that i see yeah i don't see them either and if people want to know mvl's thoughts he's actually streaming these games live so if you go on twitch.tv slash mvl chess i believe that's his twitch account you could actually see him speaking about his action you may have to deal with a little bit of a french accent but if you can handle that well then you'll be in tune to some very good thoughts about this chess game. Right. Um, hey, Amon, the game between Baki83 and Quinton94 looks very interesting as well. Um, so I'm going to pull that one up. That's Quinton Ducarman and yeah. Etienne Bacro. So yeah. that's a French, and I can't tell if it's gone wrong for white or black yet because it looks well, like... Robert, it's a French, so it's obviously <laughs> gone wrong. Well, you know, I'm trying to be polite here. I know that everyone knows I'm a French hater. I cannot stand that opening. But I'm trying to be respectful, especially when a Frenchman is playing a French, right? It's got to be like, yeah. you know, he's in his wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah. This, he's going to be the best player at it, for sure. <laughs> so this pawn e5 is clearly under target already. And the last move was knight d4 back to c6. So it's not, this pawn was under attack, but you didn't want to lose your knight on d4 in the process, which is why knight c6 was played. And now yeah. both knights are attacking that e5 pawn. And, well, I mean, black's up a pawn to begin with. It's looking pretty decent for black, at least yeah. at first it, it glance. Actually, in the, in the opening, after, uh, after the move um, bishop or e5, let's say, sometimes there's a line you can play instead of g6 where, where you just play h6 after move 7. Okay. And 
the idea is to just play like G5 really quickly. So all that I see here from this game is it sort of feels like almost that exact same line um, because some of the moves that came after were identical, uh, just with this move H, H4 included. Right. Um, as we took this double step with G6, G5. So I'm not sure what to make of that, whether it's good or bad, but I think that it's really common for white to actually lose one or even two of his center pawns and just say to black, okay, you, you might be up a pawn, you have some active pieces, but your king long-term has nowhere to go. Queen side and king side both are very safe. So I think with the move bishop B2, he's trying to make uh, make the case that, you know, uh, if I bring the rooks to the open files and my bishops have good diagonals, I might be able to try to make a case here, but not sure, not sure how true that is. Right, especially because there's already two pawns given up for the long diagonal. This bishop on B2 yeah. is very, 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 very well placed, and a rook on E1 will launch an attack, but two pawns are two pawns, and this knight on E5 already threatens the bishop on D3. Of course, the queen on G4 should move, so let's say you go queen E2. I can even think about giving up an exchange with knight takes D3, but I'll probably just play bishop G7, right, and just challenge your bishop on the long diagonal and say, well, I actually have some threats of my own, and you know, if you play a move like f4, the white king doesn't feel that safe either. Yeah, no, giving up both pawns is, is a little suspect, especially because this move comes with tempo, and you, you get a free bishop to g7 move. Uh, and, and Okay, he goes with rook g8, threatening queen takes h4 if, if white goes for the knight on e5. Ooh, but that's, it just that's looks nice. like a, a, a nice transition. Bishop g7 looked like a very good move, but... It, it seems like he's actually even improved. He's going to get rook g8 and potentially bishop on d6, which yeah. is just much better. And especially if bishop takes e5 just results in queen takes h4 ideas, then white has absolutely nothing. So bishop e5, knight e5, queen takes e5, you're not winning a piece because queen takes h4 makes use of the fact this pawn on g3 is pinned to the king on g1. So yeah, this just right. looks excellent for black, and that's a nice win if he's able to pull it off for the uh, Marseille migraines with the black pieces because Quentin du Carmon may be the third board for the Mosquitoes, but right. that's a very high-rated third board at 2483, especially with the white pieces. Yeah, no, that's that's no easy game. Um, what do you think of the game between uh, Alexander Bacro uh, against Belcher Spoman? Because uh, it seems to me like uh, that's, a, that's a board four matchup that uh, we need to pay attention to because honestly, it looks like he's doing a fantastic job so far. Yeah, with the white pieces, how many? Pawns? He's up two pawns right now. His king feels a little bit airy, right? Because there's no yeah. the bishop on g2. You could put a bishop there. Your light squares feel better, but at the same time, um, the only attacking chances that black seems to have is with his bishop on c5 hitting the f2 square. And white is one move away from playing bishop e3 at this point. So yeah, uh, it just looks like the type of position that if you're up two pawns here, you always tell yourself worst case that you probably give one back and still be better in an end game. Absolutely, and I think the Bacros are in tandem today, and we were talking before the show, is this uh, Etienne's son? I mean, I really still don't know, but what I do know about Alexander Bacro is his rating here says 2193. In the live ratings, he's, like, I think, 2250, and so okay. he's been gaining yeah. rating points. He's a young player, and so that's very promising for uh, the young French uh, player and the French team in general because... Well, when you have an underrated board four who's young and improving, that's very dangerous in a league like this. Yeah, absolutely. And you got, what, board one, Maxime, board two, Etienne back row, and then to have a board four that, that can score points, not even just uh, give tough games, but it looks like he might even be, be seriously playing for a win here. Yeah, and like you said, now bishop e3, give up that b2 pawn, but trade off the uh, dark square bishop. That's even a possibility for yeah. the young Buckrow here as well. So um, other moves that come to mind include a3 with the idea of just going a3, b4, and saying, well, I don't even want to give up that pawn, b3, just immediately. Why, b3, why not? you just keep the pawn. I mean, there's no rook d8. That's the thing. So, yeah, honestly, you're just you're just up to clean pawns here. There's no rook infiltration. There's there's nothing. I mean, he's, he's really putting on a clip. And in fact, maybe White's the one who's about to launch an attack with queen c3, forcing that bishop back to f8. Because now with that bishop on b2, you see this long diagonal. The g7 square feels a bit vulnerable. So bishop d4 followed by c3 is the most logical yeah. continuation for white. Exactly. And even if you end up losing like a pawn and say you know, bishop d4, c3, and somehow black takes on d4 and you win that, that pawn there, well, that's not a big deal. Like you keep saying, Amon, white is up two pawns, so giving one back is really not that big a deal. It leads you into a much better endgame. So bishop d4 here. Feels, bishop uh, d4 takes, uh -oh. takes rook d1. Yes. Yeah, yes. You, I yes. was about to say it. <laughs> 
Rook e1 check, and all of a sudden this rook on d1 is overloaded, protecting the queen, and this rook on um, a1. Robert, it's, it's all that puzzle rush, you know? <laughs> You're on fire right now, right? Because king g2, just to finish this off, uh, queen d4, rook d4, and then finally at the end, the rooks are staring each other down. Rook takes a1 happens, and that's not good. So queen f3 was played. Look at right. Alexander Buckrow playing confidently, playing well, and still up two pawns in this game. Yeah, quite, quite impressive. So we, we saw that uh, we thought Maxime had a good looking attack. We thought that um, was a great position for, for back row when we last looked. And then the other back row we just took a look probably has the best position out of them all uh, as the board four. Okay, so should we head back to the MVL game because I haven't checked that out in a while or where, where should we go? Do you want to check the other game? Uh, I don't think it's that uh, interesting, but the other game in this match between uh, Alvin Delorme and David Klein. Okay. Uh, it looks like Delorme is up, up a pawn. Uh, that seems to be the case in pretty much all these matches, right? <laughs> one side's like up a pawn, and the other one's going for compensation. Um, yeah. But this one, at least, it looks like there's a little bit more to to, to play for uh, down the pond here for for David Klein. Yeah, I mean, the light squares feel a little bit more vulnerable here than in that other game because Black does have a light square bishop. But at the same time, you have sacrificed a pawn, so you need to be quick. So if you play moves like bishop g4, white will respond right. bishop e2, blocking the pin, then you can maybe move your rook to e, one of the rooks to e8, maybe rook f8, try to go rook e4. So mm -hmm. black is picking up some steam here quite quickly. Uh, but at the same, by the same token, you know you are down a pawn. I like, <laughs> can't yeah. can't say that enough. Yeah, and the bishop also, you know, if you don't play bishop g4 necessarily, I might be able to sneak in bishop f1, g2, something like that where, you know, I feel like my king is never in trouble. But the other long-term thing is the bishop on c1 is going to take a little bit to, to get developed. So it just depends whether black can organize some sort of uh, initiative before then or not. But I like, you know, bishop g4, like you said, rookie at all seems to come with tempo. And, you know, 15-minute 15, 15 games, sometimes the uh, the tempo is is all that matters. And I think he just offered a draw. White just offered a draw. Really? Yeah. Uh, Declined that... <laughs> him. That prompted him to move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would not be happy if someone offered me a draw in this position just because there's so much life left. And White needs to prove that you can develop in time, right? Because if you're not developing, all of a sudden, even with like rook c8, with the idea of both bring the rook down to c2 and bishop c7 was an option. Okay, when rook a to e8 makes perfect sense, as we were talking about. Yeah but rook A to C8 made sense as well. So it's looking pretty good for David Klein in this position, and he is the high-rated player, so this yeah. is where the Mosquitoes want to make their mark. Yeah, this looks like the only game that looks decent. Do you want to jump back to MDLs? Because I think it's, it's heating up, like you're saying. Whoa, okay, so all of a sudden, white has a mass of pawns in C4, C5, but there's a black pawn on G2, so is the idea to play bishop g5 to f4 and queen to h3 and just deliver checkmate on h2, or is it just rook f8 and pile up on the f2 pawn? I can't tell which idea is more yeah, promising. Yeah, he's, uh, he's faking us out. Um, the, the awful thing for white is you're, it's not like you're getting attacked, but you're like crashing through on the queen side. You're getting attacked, and black is a move away from something like knight c5, which would just be entirely consolidating. So something like, I don't know, do we go for rook, rook f8 looks looks pretty good here it's going to force what queen d2 well your move knight takes c5 what's wrong with that because knight c5 knight takes d6 you just go knight d3 and are threatening bishop takes f2 check and knight takes e1 and now the knight on d6 yeah. is also a problem there's there's just nothing nothing here knight c5 you probably have to and if you have to bring the queen back or something like queen d2 then you know it's just game over like yeah, knight d3 looks like it still works, and there's no the knights on b6 and b5 are just uh, taking some Polaroids. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's a great way to put it. It's a Kodak moment here, but it's funny because knight takes c5 is like the obvious move. You're just taking a pawn, but because we're so focused on the f2 pawn, we're like, oh, rook f8 right away and just go for checkmate. But sometimes the simplest move is the best move. And okay, queen yeah. c3 does very little to stop knight d3, for example. Yeah, knight I mean, d3 looks probably resignable actually. Yeah, because you can't even protect f2 without losing your rook on e1, and rook f8 can come next. Actually, knight f4 to h3 checkmate if you Ooh. go queen d2 here, or queen yeah, c2. Yeah, and queen d2 is the most likely move, actually. And so then, then knight f4. The Yikes. That's a nice one. That, that's an ouchy moment. Yeah, and there's no rook f1 ever because that pawn is there. So, I, yeah, honestly, MVL just uh, came out and just crushed his opponent in, in round one here. 
Yeah, so that's a nice win for MVL. No surprises there when you're the, what, sixth rated player in the world? Yeah, <laughs> no surprises at all. Um, so has the other match, any of the other matches? Oh, it seems like we do have some of the other matches underway as well. I see Georg Meyer is playing. So I'll just pull up all the games, and then we can um, figure out which ones we want to look at. But I just want to have all of them open. Yeah, yeah, those ones are... Uh, kind of well underway, actually, in, into the middle games in, in most of them. Okay, so you tell me which game we should look at, and I will pull that one up. for. Well, the, the first one is going to uh, satisfy you because it's another French defense. Uh, oh, no. From, from Georg Meyer, of course. Oh, of course. no. Okay, <laughs> we'll go to Georg's game here. And I, I keep getting it from, it keeps going to the black side of things because it wants to have Georg Meyer's perspective, but because I can't handle the French, I'm putting White's perspective up here. <laughs> Although this doesn't look bad at all. We're in an end game. No, I know. This looks this actually, is as good as it gets. <laughs> this looks quite nice for black because that pawn on a5 is overextended and that rook on h5 is forever spying on it. Yeah, I, I trading into an end game in the French kind of around move 20, if you just look at that position, like that's like a, a dream for black when you don't have to worry about being cramped. You can sort of tuck your king into the center on e7. That's one of the best feelings as a, as a French player. Yeah, I wouldn't know what that feels like because I just don't play the French. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at this end game. The king is so quick to the center. And like you said, then g5 happened, and rook c5. It seems like Georg Meyer, very familiar, of course, with the French ideas as a lifelong French player. But yep. to me, this position just looks very good for black because the pawn a5 is not easy to protect. You have to move your bishop, and that bishop on b3 can't move just to play the move b4. And so I don't actually see how you're going to be able to keep that pawn a5 well defended, at least. You know, yeah. you're gonna have to, keep the rook you have to leave the rook there, right? Which is terrible. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know. The rook on a1, like, when you put the pawn there in a middle game, it's nice to restrict the pawns. But sometimes when you get to an end game, maybe in the Cairo Khan or something, you know, when you shove that h pawn up to h5, and then suddenly you're in an end game, you're like, wait a minute, I can't defend that guy. That is way too far out. Yeah, it's actually a lot of things seem to be going wrong for, for white because you have a, this open f file to work with but there's a black bishop on e8 protecting f7. Right. And the bishop on b3 is staring at a brick wall with the pawns on f7 and e6. The knight on d3, it looks totally fine, but what's its future like? So, yeah. you know, it's not like black is winning here, but I just really like black's position out of the opening that I consider not a great opening to just be in an end game where I see a move like knight d7 to c5 here as an option for black to trade off yeah. white's best piece, which is this knight on d3, and then try to team up on that a5 pawn. And there's knight yeah. d7. Yeah, knight d7, knight c5. Uh, once, once you trade that off, uh, let's not forget that the technically the, the e pawn is a protected pass pawn. It doesn't look like it yet, but uh, that's that's a big uh, big imbalance to, to focus on in, in this position. The a pawn is going to require defense at all times, probably just rook c7 here, nice and easy, and then follow with knight c5. Yeah, and you're, you made a great point about the e pawn because I wasn't even thinking about it since the first move, it sat on e6. But <laughs> yep. that, that is a pass pawn in the making, and you can start pushing that at the right moment, and that could be a bit of an issue. So knight f4, actually, this idea looks very strange, but it does make sense because you're forcing white, excuse me, black to find some coordination. Um, and here, knight back to d3, I think, makes sense as well. Just challenge that rook. Does the rook really want to go to e2? And if it goes yeah, to e2, then a5 is no longer um, a target. So. Interesting setup looks, right now. Looks like a Georg, Georg Meyer position, though. Hey. Uh, one that he's going to excel at and definitely the best case scenario for the French. So it's like when he signed up to play E6 today, I'm sure that he was hoping to get a position exactly. <laughs> exactly. One that most, it's not, you know, not most people's taste, but it is the Georg Meyer special. Yes. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty exciting game in, in this match between uh, Kirill Alexenko uh, and uh, Steve Berger from. The, okay, the what's snowballs against it's uh Bilodo A if you need the username. Uh repeat that one again. Bilodo A. Bilodo uh don't see that one. Against Dr. Burger Burger. Oh there it is. Okay, right there. Okay. I have too many games open. There it is. Whoa. Whoa. This one looks like fun. Okay, so material count is currently white is up a piece for a pawn. Right? 
Did I do that right? I'm, I'm still I'm still counting here, Robert. <laughs> you know, math uh, is not our strong suit, but we're trying here. I see three minor pieces for white, just yeah. two for black, and that means yeah. Rook just took something on f5. So, okay. Yeah, Rook Whoa. takes knight on f5. So, so, okay, one of those thematic pawn sacrifices in the Grand Prix attack to get some action going on the king side, and now Rook takes f5. So what's the... Is he considering, he might be actually considering castling in some weird way. I'm just wondering why he's thinking, um, because otherwise, I think you just snap that rook off. Right, so if e takes f5, what's the move? Yeah, what, what's the big idea? I is it is it queen e2 with some knight? But then king f8, and... Yeah. Was this like a that. desperation kind of tactic more than anything? I... I Really failing to see where maybe actually okay, e bishop, no, bishop g5 exactly bishop, bishop g5 yeah. and then rookie one coming with check okay but after bishop g5 am I that scared of like rookie one can my king just run to g8 quickly or am I just hoping so you're gonna play queen d7 I don't really like this because rookie <laughs> one check king f8 I think rookie seven even and yeah yeah that's not or, or like bishop e7 and, and knight d6 threatens f7 in a weird way yeah that also looks good that can take on f5 as well in addition to attacking f7 yikes so took on f5 took a, a while so, so we're gonna see that follow-up i assume yeah and bishop f6 looks really wrong oh gosh <laughs> bishop so f6 he, he's forced here right i think he's got to play queen d7 I cannot see you playing bishop f6 and surviving this, but yeah, bishop f6 looks so wrong. And well, it, rookie one and either queen... Okay, well, I, I'm pretty sure Kirill Alexenko might end up in a tactic book <laughs> And that's a strong grandmaster, right? Kirill Alexenko yeah. is no joke, but either no, he walked into to Steve... Personally, Steve Berger, that just sounds like you know everybody's next-door neighbor, right? <laughs> It's my and, book. and he's out, he's out here flexing on him right now. <laughs> he is not holding anything back, and just so what's the finish here? So queen h6 check forces bishop g7, and yeah, then that's maybe what he's counting on. then what? Do I drop the queen back somewhere? Do I? There's also bishop h6. So bishop h6, bishop g7 again is forced. Yeah, I'm assuming. This. Oh man, this is, this is so close. It's so close. Wait, I have an idea, Amon. What about knight d6 here? Uh huh. So and knight then... d6 threatening f7 with me. If you take me on d6, I have queen h6 check now, and you can't go bishop g7 because your queen's hanging on d6. Yeah, I like that. Uh, just to start off, uh, knight d6 is, is fantastic, but even if you don't see knight d6, you play this position and you just know it's going to be there, right? Yeah. It's just, it just looks like it, but knight d6 is great. So after knight d6, if I can't take that, I mean, no, I, I'm just lost, right? Yeah, I mean, the queen f7 mate is a huge threat here. This just looks pretty awful, and maybe this is oh, one of those... It's on the board. It's on the board. I mean, I don't know if this is qualifies as just a miniature or as, like, game of the week material, but it's uh, obviously not yeah, good. This is, this is going to be... Uh, it's the type of position I don't think you can even prolong. Bishop e8 is resignable. Queen d6, queen h6 is, like, resigns on the spot. Yep. Uh, I, think, I think this is going to be under 20 moves, Robert. Yeah, this is just checkmate pretty much uh, by force. This is just a brute force method. Oof, and, uh, disgusting game. Actually, so some of the games don't have that much time left, including the game between Etienne and Bacro. So I'm going to throw us back there. Okay, yeah, Bacro is the time there. Bacro is up two pawns and up two minutes on the clock. So actually, I'm not worried about him. Um, he looks that, comfortable there. That looks real um, good. Also, David Klein is completely winning up a full rook against <laughs> I'm why, not sure why they're even still playing that. Yeah, why is this game continuing? I guess it's a team event, but like that's a full <laughs> rook against a grandmaster. Well, Robert, let's let's not forget he's the guy who offered a draw earlier. So that's you true. Know. That's true. <laughs> Albin Delorme, you know, he's hoping for the best, but not happening. And how about the uh, younger Buckrow? He's, he's got a. It's, it's impressive what he's doing right now because he's got his rook almost perfectly placed. And oh, I think nice. he's just going to chase the rook down with king c6, king b6, yep. and try to get that a pawn going. And once you do that, I mean, this is already a 2-0 match for the Marseille migraines. I think that David Klein is, you know, with difficulty, going to convert his extra rook. Um, but then uh, I think this is a chance for, for a 3-1, maybe at least 2.5. Yeah, I mean, look at this. 
I mean, this is really impressive by the young Buck Crow. And actually, if Rook A4, would you throw in the move E5 just to trade yeah. off those pawns first? Because that's the only thing that Black is hoping for. So let's say Rook A3 is like, yeah. if I do bring my king and then push my A pawn and get my Rook behind A2, maybe the Black King will scoop up my E4 pawn. You can even think about throwing in E5 and trading off the pawn with check. Okay, he didn't do it. He just can go straight forward with A4. But now King F3 comes. This is exactly... Yeah, no, I, I did like that idea. I think that he's... He's still completely fine here. If he maybe shoves the, the move like rook d7 in there, I think he can get behind the pawns. But uh, I, I like d5 a lot. Just it cleans up the structure. Right. You just would have been able to keep two on two on the king side, keep your rook on the second rank, and then put the rook behind yeah. the a pawn. Yeah, because now you got to deal with the past f pawn. You know, f5, right. f4. It's just uh, one of those things that it's kind of annoying to calculate. But I'm assuming what's going to happen is he's going to try to take the h pawn and then give the past f pawn and maybe sack the rook for it but he's he's playing really quickly really confidently i, I i'm inclined to trust him it's sort of looking drawish to me though and maybe so i'm rook, rook h7 so rook h7 f3 rook h6 f2 do you play f2 or maybe rook f8 uh rook f8 is also a nice inclusion that actually might that might actually be almost winning for black at that point F2, Rook F6, King E2. I'm a little scared after like A6 and A and H4. That but I can get a queen. Uh, maybe I'm, am I not in time? I thought I could chase your pawn down, but you might be right. <laughs> I get that uh, nice little uh, double hop. H2, H4 to, yeah. to jumpstart the race. Yeah. And so here he went with the rook f8 move, which is smart. Just saying, okay, now my pawn is threatening to promote. You have to throw in rook d6. Oh, rook h3, I guess, solves that okay. issue as well. But this this one is going to be a draw, I think. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So he went for the king to c4. He could have just went king e2 uh, and then taken with the king on f3. I think he was trying to bring the king there so that if white played rook takes f3, he's trying to set up some sort of, like, you know, a checkmate in the corner there. Yeah. But I, I don't actually think that works, so <laughs> maybe he could have taken and just played a6. So can't black just go king d5, rook h5 check, king d6, rook h6 check, king d7. So the black king will make its way to c8, and then white will go rook c1, c7 check to c1. So least... If we go to d8, though, I might play a6, a7. Oh, boy. So it's becoming a little bit tactical here, and actually black <laughs> only has 12 seconds. Yeah, so after another check, I don't know if you have the guts to play a move like... King D8 or, or something like that. Maybe uh, you play King E8, and after A6, Rook F6, take the pawn. He played King D8. So oh. a, A6. Oh, you got A6 is scary to me. Um, wait, what do you? Yeah, no, this is this is bad. Now he's losing for sure. Wait, what? What? What did he just do? Now there's Rook F6 and Queen. Wait, did he just go from winning to losing? I don't know if that was winning the A6 move, but this is definitely dead lost. Yeah, just rook h1 and clean up. Oh my, what a turnaround. Because That's... David Klein won for the Mosquitoes on that other board, and Alexander Bacro here was just better the entire game, if not oh. winning, and law. Oh my gosh. I mean, the, the, the board fours who are rated uh, 2193, they have to have a weakness, right? I, I mean, this is the only flaw I saw in his whole game, really. This, this is just... decision making just at the end. I mean, this is upsetting, though. It's just I, I hate to see when, a, especially when a young, you know, rising player plays so well and just blunders, not even in a difficult end game, from a superior end game, blunders into a loss. So that's not a good look for the board yeah. four, especially with the white pieces. No, not a good look because the game was so clean up until then, and that yeah, that's just game over. So that actually finished two two after it could have been at the very least three one. Right. Wow. That's, uh, that's really shocking stuff there. Um, so that match is over, at least for the first round. Where, where do we go now? Which, uh... Well, there's, there's a few games that are getting low on time in that match we were just taking looked at, a look at. Uh, first of all, just to, to mention, York Myers' game uh, we already looked at, but there's another game between uh, Dimitri Colors, which looks like probably game over okay. uh, for Dimitri Colors against Leon Mons. Uh, looks like up a piece for for black and probably a uh, both players are actually from Germany so it's a little confusing but <laughs> <laughs> that is actually the Berlin Bears uh, who are are just gonna uh, win this this game momentarily I'm assuming so 
So what is white even hoping for? There's no perpetual check. It's not like black's king is in any danger. So bishop takes h3, does that just... Yeah, bishop h3 is, is yeah. clean. Yeah, so, if you bring the rook down, there are some, some ghost hopes. But as long as you keep the rook on d8, this one, this one is just game over. Um, we can say that the uh, uh, miraculously, that game that we looked at um, with the sacrifice we thought would be resignation, uh, he actually found a way to, to play on at the very least. Uh, he's dead lost, but he's, he's at least still playing the game. But that should be a point for the Berlin Bears. Um, and we just saw the other game that we just looked at up a piece, that, that Bishop is another point for Berlin. So Berlin is looking uh, really good in, in this match. Yeah, because Steve Berger, as you just were pointing out, he's winning. He's up a, uh, a queen and a knight for two rooks. That's just too much material. Uh, Georg Meyer is, how's he doing? He's up a pawn, but we have to say this is definitely a drawn in game. Um, but he's going he's gonna to push it, no doubt. It's funny, every time I click on Georg Meyer's game, I get it from the, his perspective. Even though I did nothing to follow him, I, I just don't know why I'm getting... It's a, it's a sign, play the French. Yeah, it's a sign. Play the French, get into an end game, be slightly better, try to outplay your low rated opponent and go from there. No, I'm right. not playing the French. It's a rookie five. I think he's going to go for it. Yeah. Uh, the other game which we haven't taken a look at yet is between Inna Agrest and Nicholas Hushenbeet. Um, okay. That's that's the remaining game in that match. Which, Whoa. Uh, Inna Agrest is is very low on time. She just played the crazy looking move knight to c three, and that is looks like it's asking to be sacrificed. Is, is rook, rook c three not a move? Yeah. Wait. What? So she stopped checkmate on the b two square. Right. That was what the intention was. And she is threatening queen takes c8. So if pawn takes c3, maybe she gets to take this rook on c8 yeah. with check. That still looks very good for black. It so, still looks actually just, just winning. Yeah, yeah it takes rook f8, king h8, and, and just, yeah, there's just no stopping. Pawn yeah, takes pawn. Just this, this is a, a big mate on b2. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what's going to happen. So queen c4 check doesn't change anything. King h8 still happens, and everything's right. falling on b2. So that's a nice right. win for the Berlin Bears. Yeah, so that's actually um, three points were just uh, scored by the Berlin Bears right there. The other two games we just announced uh, were were wins. Were, uh, they did indeed finish it off. And then we're going to see who should the finish off right here with uh, Checkmate. And then Georg Meyer just drew his game um, against uh, Raphael Laganov. So uh, that's actually three and a half, half uh, when who should finishes off this, this win here. Wow, and I just pulled up the Georg Meyer end position just to explain to everyone why they agreed to a draw. The only way for black to make progress is, let's say you trade the rooks off, but if you imagine a position without these rooks on the board and it is black's move, once you have the opposition, king and pawn versus king is an easy draw. If it is the side, you know, if it's black's move without the rook on, king c5, king c3, and this opposition is held for an easy draw. So it's, there's no progress to be made. It's a theoretically known ending. So. Who's left here? I see Alejandro Alvarado Diaz versus uh, Mate Sevenik. Uh, okay, there are many more games, it looks like, actually. Just... Yeah, I see that match. Oh, uh... MVL's second game is underway. So is Buck Rose. Uh, yeah, those but... ones just started their second game. And meanwhile, we have the first games between uh, some of the other matches getting underway. That's the Barcelona Raptors and the Lubana Turtles. Okay, so which game should we look at since you... Uh, you well, the, the one that I've got um, on my uh, screen right now is uh, actually the one between uh, Hippolito Assis uh, Gargantagli, as I get that <laughs> name out correctly. Uh, he's playing uh, David uh, Stevenich. So what's the uh, username there for... Uh, David Stevenich is oh, his user. Okay, that makes it easy. That's and, it's a nice and easy. In fact, I had that game open. There you go. <laughs> I was like looking at all my tabs, you're seeing all the games open, and well, sometimes it's right in front of you. And okay, so Hippolito, so is he a grandmaster? It says I am here. Um, I actually thought that uh, that he was a grandmaster because that's that's what's written on the pairing sheet, uh, and I'm it's quite possible that he just didn't update his. Uh, well, I'm going to look him up. Fide.com says he's an international master rated 2,500 plus, which is a very strong international master 
Um, very high rated, clearly. But he must have like a, I don't even see like a title application. It's, it's weird, weird to announce uh, a GM. There must be something in the works, I feel. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I guess he is just an hangout. Maybe he's just announcing that he will become a Grandmaster. Yeah, he's just letting everyone know. Whoa, okay, <laughs> but also his position with Black is just, is he up, what, one pawn here? Oh, just one, okay. That actually gives yeah. White some hope. Yeah, that bishop on b6 is a, is a real team player here. Yeah, it is. it's protecting that very important f2 square. Otherwise, there might be some quick mating ideas for black. Right. So, now, hmm. The it's other actually, people playing this match, is it um, Raphael and Donatello? Because I'm looking for these games and I don't actually see them. Yeah, one of the games, I think, just finished, if I'm not mistaken. There was a Donatello game. I don't know where that oh, went. Oh, quick one, okay. But Rafael is playing against Peroncio. I might have butchered the pronunciation of that, but um, I can pull up that game as well. Whoa, that game is sort of crazy, in fact. It looks like yeah. the, some <laughs> just sacrifice a bishop with bishop takes g5. Yep, this is, this is one to, to take a look at here. Um, okay, so you definitely... look like bishop takes g5, wow. You, you cannot take with the h pawn. Okay, so let's explain why this just happened. If right. que queen takes h6 right away, black had queen h7, forcing the queens off the board. So what uh, white's intention is after bishop g5 is you cannot take with the h-pawn because of forced checkmate. Queen h8 check, king f7, queen h7 check, king e8, queen g8 is checkmate on the board. Which yep. means that after bishop g5, if you're going to take, you take with the f-pawn, in which case white can start with move like f6, trying to go f7, f8 equals queen. That seems like a pretty good strategy. Or... Once you take on h6, if queen h7 happens, your queen takes g5 and your queen gets out of it. Right. With, obviously, a big attack on this king on g8. So is he going to take this bishop, or is he going to play something like rook a, a2? That's a great question, because rook a, a2 threatens the g2 pawn, but thankfully it's not mate, right? The queen on h5 protects h2. So maybe after rook a, a to a2, will white continue with bishop takes f6, perhaps? And bishop f6, yeah. Rook g2, king h1, and say that, yeah, if you think it, that I'm kind of worried about is like, let's say rook h2, queen h2, rook takes, king takes, queen a7, and can I just sort of get in there with the queen? It's kind of a race. Who's going to checkmate who? Right. Both kings are feeling unsafe, but the queen, especially with the bishop covering the a1 square and not being, allowing rook a1, that queen is, just looks more powerful here in the checkmate race. Yeah, that looks like a good idea. Maybe you can even wait because you can't protect h2. So maybe right. there's some move that we can throw in here um, to help our cause. But knight e7 check is actually pretty annoying yeah, to do it. Is, uh, actually, we have that on the board as well, king h1. So I think black is probably going to feel the need to bail out with a move like rook takes h2 here. Yeah, rook h2 might be the only way to play. And then with this queen a7 idea, it still looks very promising for black. Um, but, your, like I said, your king is not that safe either on g8, especially if those two rooks can team up. Right. Um, okay. Hmm. So, b4 was played. So instead of queen a7, just b4. Okay, the queen can come to b5, it can come to a4. The rook still can't get to a1. So in rook f2, covering the second rank. Yeah, but... he wants to play rook g1, but I think knight f3 was concerning him. Yeah. So queen okay, b5. Here comes the queen. So rook uh, I have to say, I feel like black is, is preferred, uh, the queen against the two rooks here. So I guess rook g1 you have to do, right? Just go for the attack? Right, yeah. Rook d1 is a little slow, but maybe you have ideas like rook d1 and bring the other rook to g2 to hold the fort momentarily, but sure. Rook g1, let's say. Yeah, he's gone for that. Okay, so king f7. Mm -hmm. Is there some kind of like, no, it doesn't work. Well, actually, can I go knight h8 check? Knight h8. King f6, rook g6 check, king e7, f6 check. Mm -hmm. That This looks great. King f8, f7, followed by rook g8 check, and I'm getting a queen. Yep, or if you want to do it by force, rook g8 check might be a force mate. Oh. But, but f7 is... is so you're, as well. so you're saying just rook g check instead of f7, take f7 yeah. check. That's beautiful. And that, that could be nice. That's getting a queen because king f8, knight g6 check, and then f8 equals queen anyway. So this is actually 
knight h8 check, not the first move that comes to mind. I was just, <laughs> I was realizing that if I go bishop h8, for example, it's a little slow, right? Bishop h8, then knight h4, then rook g7 check. That doesn't yeah. feel quick enough with queen takes d3 hanging. So I was just going right forward with, um, there it is, knight h8 check. This could be a tactic of the week because this is really just um, a phenomenal way to conclude yeah. this game. So I think he's, wow, he took it so quickly. Yeah, you ha you can't I, take I that. Thought king, I thought king e8 was the move there. Just try to sprint over. It looked like he might have been escaping. Yeah, just run no, the king that way. Great. Now now he's, I mean, now it's just lost because king to the d file, just f7, f8, even protects your rook, worst case. Um, and king f8, he's, I mean, the thing about king f8 is even, um, I, I mean, there's so many ways that like rook g7 is winning, f7 is winning, rook g8 is winning. Yeah, this is this is winning. That's a really nice way to finish this game by Alejandro Alvarado Diaz. Actually, I have no idea who that player is. I see, yeah. you know, I know the plays for the Barcelona Raptors, but um, I've never heard of him before looking at this game. But I'm impressed with this tactic here. Yeah, uh, is he just going to go down on time? Yep. yep. That's wow. a that's a disappointing way to win a really nice game. Is on time? Okay, David Stevan Stevanovic has uh, or Stevanich has four seconds. So. Okay. He has four seconds and one pawn. <laughs> okay. So never mind. We're not going to look at <laughs> that game. I, I saw the time left. I was like, okay, got to go here. So where? Yeah, no, the, the other game is uh, actually um, the one that's uh, that's still going. Boris Marcoja against uh, Carles Diaz Camionga. Okay. Camionga. Well, Camionga is a pretty sweet name. Yeah. Um, and uh, this game is. Well, reasonably even so far. I mean, no one's up uh, serious material, and it's a, probably a big one for you know for the match. So queen f two, pinning your own rook, generally not advised, but there's no way to take advantage of it. Okay, I don't really like what Black has done these last couple of moves because the queen on e five. Okay, maybe he's going to f six to keep d six well defended. But if I'm white, I consider rook e one and rook e four just taking over the e file. Right. I guess white is just content to prevent d5 from happening, but... It looks like it, and if, I mean, yeah, king g2 looks looks correct. I'm not sure if you ever want to throw in the, like, the g4, h5 type of stuff, but um, well, d5 is, uh, is interesting. Yeah, he wants to take with the bishop, it looks like. Yep. So I was just reading some of the chat here, and someone said, Robert, someone wants to know why you hate the French so much. And, you know, people who play the French hate the French. So why am I supposed to like it? Don't put that onus on me. It's ain't my responsibility. That seems fair. Okay, so D5 played by... Wait, is it Carl's or Carlos? It says Carl's. Uh, Carl's, I think. Or Carlos, I guess it would be. Okay. Yeah, I guess that is the right spelling. I just never... I didn't... I always just assumed it was going to be Carlos, but Carlos. Um, okay, so finally d5 was played. So pawn, let's count. Pawn d5, bishop d5, knight d5, rook d5, rook d5, rook d5, rook d5, queen d5. Okay, you don't have to take with the pawn on d5, then you should do it. Yeah. No, d, d5 looks well-timed if that's the case. In fact, king g2 uh, looks foolish after d5 because of some bishop takes f3 ideas. And that's why so, King has changed his play. He shoved the King back over to, to h2 there. And that's a good tactic to show. So let's say h5 was played, bishop takes f3, check comes, and there's uh, this d4 rook is hanging because black has way too much firepower attacking it. So mm -hmm. you're right. You know, uh, King g2 invited the move d5. But maybe, so do you go bishop e6? You might just blunder some material by <laughs> putting your uh, piece in harm's way with a rook e4 coming, something like that. Right. c5. What? That just looks so janky. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to put the bishop on c6 to defend? That's actually maybe a creative way to defend, but that looks but very But just suspicious. takes in knight d3 at the end. Oh, yeah. Take, 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 knight d3, and take on c5. What? Okay, both players are uh, in the Yeah, because even knight d3, queen f5, knight c5, queen h3, just king g1, and I'm, I'm very okay there. Right. So I think knight d3 check. was missed. Yeah, knight d3 looked good. The queen d2 invites bishop c6 with tempo because you don't want to take the a5 pawn. That's a meaningless pawn in the grand scheme of things where the f3 pawn is very valuable, of course. Some, uh, some strange moves, uh, I would say, here. But uh, one long-term thing that white always has is, is playing h5. 
Oof, these moves are really surprising to me. Amon, I have a question for you. Bishop takes f3. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. so he didn't do it. But I was saying, if instead of queen b2, if bishop f3, could you yeah. have considered queen d8 check and queen h8 check, just trying to trade off the queens into a knight versus bishop ending? Yeah. So just to show everybody, so I don't have to do this in my head, just getting into a knight versus bishop ending, where the idea is that with the bishop, you have trouble defending pawns and dark squares. A knight can go from color to color. So that would have been a very interesting dynamic. So instead... Yeah, I like that. Goes it's like, like queen d4. I, I'm, I'm really having uh, some trouble. Bishop takes f3 this time. There was queen d8, queen d3 picking it up. Um, but it just seems like... I'm getting the feeling like neither of these players are calculating very far ahead because that, there's been like pawns and stuff hanging almost every move. Right. I'm not sure... So, okay, so f3 is now hanging. Queen d4 is very well placed. It defends the d8 square. But queen mm -hmm. e1... This okay. is just a perp that he wants. Or better. Yeah, maybe he's trying to get queen e8 check, knight g6 stuff, or knight e6. No, knight e6 I doesn't work. I think he can play queen e8, queen g6, and then knight e6. Ah, that looks pretty tempting. Just Because then c5 hangs as well in some lines. Uh, but still, queen e5 keeps things maybe under control. No, queen e5 runs into queen e8 check. Queen e8, king h7. And then knight f8 knight check. F8. Yeah. yeah. Just to... Wow, so so this might be... Queen e 8s a big move. Queen e 6 is also a... Okay, same exact idea. Yeah, I think he's going to get it eventually, right? Yeah, he, he can choose how to do this, but his queen will eventually come to just a queen e 8 check now. So queen well, e 8 actually, queen g6. He might play queen c8 check, queen f5 check, and then knight e6 as well. That right. looks really good in addition. That's another one. So he's going to do that way. He's going to queen f5 check. Uh-huh. And then knight e6. Knight e6. And then we're threatening what? The bishop on f3 is hanging, threatening c5 pawn, threatening queen f8 check, takes g7. Um, I definitely like the other version, but this one looks pretty good as well. It looks like it does the... T so knight e6, queen d7? Uh, queen d7 looks like an only move, even. And then maybe g4. Very weird-looking move, but... Yeah. But then I can move my bishop safely. Actually, what so. about knight takes g7 here? Oh, knight takes g7, you might go queen d1 and mate me first. <laughs> that would be funny. Because knight g7 is trying to... Oh, he, oh, oh, he played it. Queen d1. Queen d1. Go queen d1. Oh, he uh, missed it. Okay, queen so, d1 would have been very fun. So now because white... Then, even then, oof. Now white is just up a pawn and... the. King is better for white, so somehow you want to trade the queens. And look at him bringing the king up. Yeah, he sees a man. So how to end this? Okay, he's going to check on d4 after. Oh, I don't He's... <laughs> Funny, weird little repetition here. So he's got to figure out a way to get the knockout blow, but I'm not quite seeing it yet. Are there... I'm gonna keep, we'll keep... Was... Here, but I'm just trying to check if there are any other games coming down to the wire. I see that yeah. MVL won another game. He trapped his opponent's queen. That's hilarious. You know, this started with like, you know, there's a few games. Oh, the next ones are starting. Now there's so many games yeah. to actually keep track of. I'm, I'm flipping through trying to find some interesting ones here. Yeah. Um, but this game should... Oh, Queen G4 check. What? Didn't play Queen G4 check? <laughs> he had Queen G4 just trading the queens off. Oh, that is... That's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, and, you know, uh, actually, I'll keep the game live because there's only a few seconds left for each side, but queen g4 check, traded the queens, and the king was in time to get back to, to cover that c-pawn. So, so that here, is... here, if we can check on... e6, queen e6 check is winning. Okay, queen, e, queen g6, yeah. queen takes h6. Yeah, there you go, there you go. And now you can bring the king out into g5, maybe. Yeah, yeah. king g5 now, and then there's going to be a block on f5 right now. Yep, if check, queen f5 and queen f7 mate is the threat. So that's game over here. But wow, many almost missed opportunities, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, black missed a great opportunity with that queen d1 tactic. But, you know, white was the one pushing for the win in this one. Right. So Boris Markosia. Don't know who you are, but you won a nice game in the end. All right, so where are we going? Um, well, it's not a particularly interesting game, but uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, Arientari is actually down a pawn in, the, in a rook end game.
against uh, against his opponent. And uh, I'm pretty sure isn't Aryan uh, the top board of of the team. So that's that's already kind of a big a big result for the the first round for them. Yeah, he's board one for the gnomes, and yeah, so he's Seb- got to defend. Is Sebastian board? What board is he for the gnomes? Um, he should be board three, I think. Okay. For the gnomes, um, so it's Ariantara, Johan Solomon, and then it's Christian Stubikholm, and then it's Torborn Ring Dalhansen. Gotcha. Yeah. So, Sebastian Joie? How do you pronounce that? Uh, yeah. Okay. You did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best. I took French in high school. You know, hopefully it paid off in some way. All for this moment, Robert. Yeah, and this rook in four against rook in three ending <laughs> that, that I don't want to look at anymore. Exactly. No, it's not one to look at, but uh, it is kind of a big big result um, that Aryan is, is not even playing for a win. He's trying to hold a draw for the team. Yep. And, you know, it's hard to put the team on your back and make draws against lower-rated players, but... Such, such as life in the Pro Chess League when the other team is pretty evenly stacked, right? Like some teams have a 2,800 on board one and then like a 2,000 on board four. The Khan Blitzstreams, they have a 2,600 on board one in Maxime Lagarde and then they have a 2,420 on board four. In fact, the Gnomes and the, and the Blitzstreams are made up pretty similarly. Um, yeah, they are in terms of composition. Yeah, so they have the pretty even lineups, which actually is quite difficult for some of the high-rated teams because if you, you can't win all your games, right? Unless you're Fabiano Caruana, Ding Li Ren, you're typically not winning every single game. And you just nick a couple draws there, and all of a sudden your team is uh, in the lead because your board four is just as capable of scoring two and a half points as another team's board three. Yeah. All right, so I don't want to look at this game anymore. It's just... It's hurting my eyes. This rook and uh, rook and four against rook and three. Yeah, get out of there. Get out of there while you still can. It's uh, it's safe. Um, back in the uh, the match with the migraines and the mosquitoes, we see um, David Klein pretty comfortably putting away uh, Alexander Backrow, the the board four in a king and pawn endgame right now. So that should be a point for the mosquitoes in in their round two, um, and. I think the rest of the guys are still playing there as well. Yeah, doing a quick pawn count, right? Uh, yeah. David Klein is up three on two on the king side. So what he's going to do is push his pawns, bring his king to the center, eventually use one of these pawns as a decoy because the black king will run to the king side and then the white king will gobble up all the queen side pawns. That's essentially how this game is going to end. So Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a game between uh, Dimitri Collars and Nicholas Huschenbeck which is kind of a very weird dynamic. They reached this position really quickly. I, they got me wondering, is this theory, like the, the Germans there are very dangerous in theory, and I don't know how they both have so much time on the clock for what kind of position I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, it's a rook against two pieces with a bunch of pawn in balance. Well, it's very interesting because I've sat, I sat near Huschenbeth at the um, Isle of Man tournament, and he mm-hmm. played super quickly, and in one game in particular against Alina Kashanskaya, who had an amazing event, um, right. and he was playing super quickly. I'm like, I don't think his position is very good. And it was some theoretical thing um, where he was black, and he just got a worse position. I believe it was a Grunfeld, but I could be mistaken at this point. And so I don't always know for well, sure right. when I see it if it's like great preparation or just playing very quickly and maybe not always the most topical line that's necessarily good so here okay let's see what white has uh, two minor pieces for a rook and about to be two pawns if you take on b2 but if you take on b2 there's a big problem with that right because not only is h7 going to be hanging queen d5 tactics and so that's why yeah. queen c4 was played to stop any capture on h7 and to keep uh, to force the trade of the queens here right yeah that looked that looked a little bit too dangerous so queen c4 and he's going to get a structure like f6, g5, h5, h4, which is going to be pretty effective against the dark squared bishop. And I have a feeling that that uh, black is probably doing well here, but it's it's so hard to foresee all the, the ramifications because white is going to win the c4 pawn, for example, maybe even the other c pawn. And uh, the two pieces escort one of the pawns down the board pretty effectively while the white king could potentially hold off the, the king side pawns. 
yeah, we're going to see this end game here. Um, you know, this, as you said, the H pawn, although it is a passed pawn, the white king will do well to uh, refrain it, restrain it, I should say. And on the other hand, white is just so quick to try to play like bishop f4 and take off the c7 pawn. I might start with bishop f4, play knight f3 to d4, and all you really need to do is win this c7 pawn, and your pawns are on their way to promotion. So uh, I guess bishop f4, you might play rook a5 to get my, the c5 pawn off the board. So it's not super clear cut yet how to make um, the knockout blow for white. Maybe king d2, to, I don't want to go king to c2 to protect b2 because then, like you said, Amon, you lose the ability to protect against the outside H pawn. Right. Right, so, exactly. So how would you finish this game off if you're Hushin Beth here? I mean hmm. Well I have the the feeling that defending the B two pawn is I mean if we yeah, if we bring the king over, I'm a little concerned about the H pawn. So I feel like we I feel like as black, we definitely throw in a move like rook b8 to see if white wants to play bishop c1 or not. Right. Uh, and maybe then start with, with h5 and, and f6, g5, get the pawn down the board. I'm not sure, like rook b1, bishop c1, I can even play maybe rook, well, I was going to say rook b5, but maybe c6, knight d4. But the problem with c6, knight d4, I mean, that's a good idea, but then you can't win my c4 pawn. So it's like, yeah, then then I wanted to play bishop f4. And ah, and just come after it. Yep, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, he's actually just going straight for it. So uh, here, knight d2, rook a4, maybe he wants to play. That's a hilarious way to defend that pawn, but <laughs> looks possible. But then maybe bishop f4. So just for comedy, um, knight d2, rook a4. Uh, bishop d4, uh, h5. Well, sorry, I went bishop f4 instead of bishop d4. Uh, but we have to we have to show the the comedic value. Of bishop okay. D4. H5. Bishop d4. Yep. Uh, h5. Uh, knight takes c4. Rook takes c4. B4. Uh, I was going b3, but okay, b4. Yep. <laughs> Just put him in a box and then, <laughs> and then bring the king. And but even that position is probably equal. Uh, but obviously, that's not the best move. Yeah. Not the best move. Well, that is actually very interesting because you can play b3 instead of b4 and just trap right. that rook there. And then this pawn in game is, like you said, the black king does sneak over very quickly. So it's... Uh, Probably just a draw, actually. <laughs> that is a very unique approach to this position. But bishop f4 makes perfect sense here just to attack yeah. the c7 pawn. And well, rook a5 is what we're... But then c6. So, okay, yeah, the idea is just to go c6, knight d4. So maybe c6 you have to play? But then knight d4 anyway, right? Yeah, c6, knight d4, rook c8. And then... Yeah, how do I get to these pawns? So maybe c6, I start with bishop d6, just to... Sure. Probably uh, h5, I guess. And then make king e3. Yeah, I'm not sure. Then you go g5. Yeah, I feel like g5. black's pawns are kind of stuck and should not be able to get too far. But at the same time... I'm finding white's approach to be a bit slow because I need to take the c4 pawn off the board and then finally start pushing my pawns. But I, something's telling me that white is just cl close to winning here. Yeah. Um, he played bishop f4, though, so that black didn't play g5, and then the bishop would be kind of useless on e3. So he wants it on that diagonal, like, no matter what. Uh, I think that the move c6 has to be played because white is threatening to me to play the move c6 himself. Right, uh, like rook, rook a7 just seems inferior, so uh, I'm not too sure what he's thinking about. Maybe rook e8 and rook e7. Like, if for some reason he thinks the pawn needs to be on c7, otherwise I would play c6, where you know you can defend it with your rook, and the maximum white can apply uh, in terms of pressure is just the knight. Right. No, it's very true. So Collar's is thinking here. Are there any other games that are in deeper time trouble or just interesting? Um, I'm pulling. I was Georg Four. Meyer's game, I'm not interested in it that much yet, but maybe it will get interesting. I'm just pulling up every game that is in progress. Yeah. The, um, the game between uh, Matej Sebenic, um, Rafael, and uh, Stewie Griffin, Jose Herrera, um, looks like it's uh, one oh. of those very thematic, um, you know, hedgehog, Maroxi sacrifices. Whoa. And it, it was, yeah, knight d5 early on in that game. And so this is one of those positions where at first I was like, white's completely winning. 
And then I did a material count and said, okay, <laughs> White has sacrificed a piece for this amazing looking position. Yeah, she better have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if you did not sacrifice a piece for just, well, it's a piece for one pawn, but if you did not sack a piece for this, you're just, I mean, you're steamrolling your opponent. And I still yeah. think White is probably going to win this game anyway. But yeah. um, you know, Queen F5 like here, for example, just attacking the knight on d7, threatening e6. You know, you yeah, could... Queen F5, maybe the disgusting looking Bishop C8. <laughs> I can't. I can't even take that seriously. But maybe it is a move. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's one of the only moves. My knight's like trapped. Say it with a straight face. Say um, Bishop C8 with a straight face. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute, Robert. <laughs> By the Bishop, way, Bay Bay underscore BP Ness says, "Whoa, Hessen Hamilton." Haven't seen this combo before. Well, welcome to a mess. You know, it's just yeah, yeah. We were discussing team names. Uh, I think a mess is definitely the best way to describe us. And just not just describe us, but also describe Jose Herrera's position here. Yes, yes. <laughs> it, this is just filthy. Uh, the ninety five move is one of those moves that uh, when it doesn't work, it usually works, and when it <laughs> works, it crushes. So it's <laughs> that's a great way of putting it, right? Like you know, even when it shouldn't work. Black often just collapses. But yeah. the point is you've given up your knight to open up the C file, take over control of the C6 square, and now the E5, E6 pawn took on D5. You also have F5 for the knight or just to steamroll your pawns down the board. And that's exactly what white did in this game was traded one pair of rooks and just went E5. And now is thinking here, but, I mean, queen F5, as we mentioned, looks good. Uh, bishop G4 probably similarly is pretty good. I'd rather queen F5 because it actually posed a threat in the F7 pawn. And right. You made a move with a straight face, Mon. I'm going to suggest a move as well. Queen f5. What about yeah. knight b8? <laughs> <laughs> Does it count if you laugh hysterically afterwards? I, I mean, I had to laugh. I mean, you just can't play a move like knight b8 and not laugh. Um, so yeah. bishop g4 was just played. This looks... He's looking to just clean up the pawn. This looks pitiful. Yeah, I mean... You can play this position in so many ways. You can like try to go for the attack, or you can just play chess, where you're like, okay, bishop g4, bishop takes h3. What are you even doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that pawn, honestly. But yeah, you know, if you go bishop c8, maybe I'll just take on h3 to keep everything safe, uh, get yeah, a second seriously. pawn for the piece, and the knight on c6 is not going anywhere anytime soon. Oh, just, just atrocious. So, yeah, this position looks heavily in favor. Um, here to to the uh, to the turtles, um, this looks like a, a gone wrong uh, hedgehog. Yeah, this looks sad. It looks real sad. It's like I'm trying to even think of any concept for black that looks okay, but nothing looks even remotely acceptable here. So, oh my God, he played knight b8. Ugh. <laughs> Is he, he's going to play bishop c8 next and then just set up the board for next game? Uh, that he might have to at this point. I mean, this just looks... Even knight takes e7 here, like take on d6 with check, open up that bishop on b2. Yeah, once the bishop opens on b2, it just has to be over. Ugh. Okay, I, I can't look at this anymore. It's hurting too much. This isn't... Yeah. We're, we're going to call that a, uh, a, a clear... Let's go with clear advantage for one. Yes. That's a, ni <laughs> that's a very nice, polite way to sum this up. Yeah. So who else do we have going on here? Um, some of the other games have just started. We actually have a, uh, um, it looks like Kirill Alexenko is going to go down to Rafael Lagano. And uh, I bring that up just because uh, this is, again, the Bilodo A against Raf Kamora. Got him. Um, because he, uh, Rafael was the one who, he did hold the draw against Georg Meyer in the first round. And uh, Kirill Alexienko, let's not forget, was the subject of that nasty uh, combination, Rook takes F5, uh, by the Dr. Burger Burger. So yeah. <laughs> he's, he's not having a good day at all. No, this is not a good day at the office for Alexienko. Uh, Steve Berger, everyone's neighbor, uh, delivered a huge knockout blow for the Berlin Bears. And right now, Rafael Lagunao is just crushing him. How many pawns is he up? T just two? Yeah. Just take that Rook, in my opinion. Yeah, or, or, you know, finesse it with rook h1. No, just take it. Take it, <laughs> play e4. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing it. He's going to go f5, g5, king e5. Just, you know, he can just push all his pawns. He's up two of them. Yeah, get those pawns up the board. 
once you get a pawn to g4, then if you like, you can just play e3 and simplify uh, one of the pawns, and then you just have the, the connected ones that just roll down the board. So pretty pretty easy conversion here, I would say. Absolutely, and it actually is very instructive because people in the chat often wonder when are opposite colored bishops, you know, when is it leading to, towards a draw? Because some positions you can be up even three pawns, but with opposite colored bishops, somehow it's a draw. Here it's not the case because Amon just pointed out that once you go g4 and e3 and force white to give up this f pawn, black has these two pawns that are connected here, and the king will just move back to g5, and the pawns sort of push themselves in that way. Um, you can just go, right. you know, pawn f4, pawn f3, and they go forward. Yeah. So, so this is, uh, I mean, this is just winning for, um, for the Berlin Bears, and they had a crushing first round, uh, three and a half half. So this is more good news for them um, as a pretty serious rating imbalance. Uh, you know, this is a win for, for Berlin with a two, almost 250 point uh, imbalance. Yeah, that's really huge. And um, both te these teams, again, are pretty level across the board. I would say that because Lagunau is Berlin's fourth board, he's a bit stronger than Ina Agrest is on board four for Baden-Baden. But right. Georg Meyer, Kirill Alexanko, these guys are supposed to score the points, but Alexanko about to start 0-2. He's clearly not getting the job done for Baden-Baden. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you have that type of imbalance roster, you need to have the, the top boards performing. That's, that's kind of the point of, of running a roster like that. Yep. All right. So let's see. Did MVL, so I'm looking at the match scores thus far. So Amsterdam and Marseille are tied 4-4. Four to four. That's pretty right. interesting because I, I honestly just assume MVL is not a team. They're going to crush. But yeah. um, when ba oh, it's Bacro's fault, the little Bacro, right? Like he yeah, was, the little guy. He, he was uh, winning that first game against Wutra oh, Stolman, and he let that one go. So the Berlin Bears are up 3.5 and a half, half and continuing to dominate this match. Ljubljana Turtles and Barcelona Raptors all tied, and same with Norway Gnomes and Khan. So we actually have many good matches here today. Yeah. Yeah, these look like uh, like good ones. One of the uh, um, one of the games between uh, David Stevanich and Carles Diaz Kameonga is uh, looks like Black is up a pawn in that one and momentarily uh though it definitely looks like like black is is doing well here white's got the active rook but with um with black playing maybe i want to say bishop f5 looks looks playable even in in light of bishop c2 yeah it's interesting because black is up a pawn though at first i didn't even realize that but bishop, bishop f5 maybe knight d4 and my knight's heading to c6 or to take this bishop on f5 also mm -hmm. an option so you know, the Bishop C2 is a threat there, too. Yeah, the activity for white definitely gives compensation. I'm not saying full compensation, but it does look like um, white... Knight, D, knight D4, Knight F4, Knight H4 also happens. Oh, yeah, that's true. So I, I should not move my knight. Maybe Bishop F5, Bishop C2. Where are you going? Queen F4? Probably Queen F4, Only yeah. move. Yep. And then what do I do? Maybe I can go... Nope. Can't do that. Yeah, unfortunately, g3, I can snag the bishop as well. Yeah, I wanted to go queen d4 and trade queens like that, but it doesn't actually work. You queen c1 check. Uh-huh, yep, queen c1. So maybe bishop f5. It's a very weird move. Can white yeah. try g4 after bishop f5? That's true. g4. I know you want to sack, and I want. <laughs> I also think <laughs> sacrificing is good there. Um, but and there's a few ways to do it, too. I can play like a knight f4 version of it, or I could just take the pawn. Yeah, I'm not playing g4. Not my pieces, <laughs> so I don't mind sacrificing and you know giving my king into the opponent's hands. But yeah, g4 yeah. is too much. Looks a bit much. So bishop f5, it looks like a reasonable... I think knight d4, just like you said, knight f4 is a good response. So bishop c2, queen f4, maybe take on f5, queen f5, right. then, and then... I was going to rook c6 there, perhaps, or queen c... No, I can't move my queen off the d-pawn. That's the problem, is my pawn d5. Yeah. Is... I, I, and I have the luxury as black of being up a pawn, so I can sort of give one up for the initiative, like sack a pawn on d6 or b6 to play move like rook e8 and knight f4, and then I feel like 
if the, the moves are, are coming in. But no, he, he decides on Rook D8. Wah, wah. Boring. Well, now I... <laughs> Now bishop c2 takes g6 is very tempting for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I would do that almost immediately because it exposes your 7th rank. Okay, you want queen d4, which is a very good move. Um, but bishop c2 taking on g6, just exposing your 7th rank, keeping your bishop stuck on d7 with no real good squares. Then my knight yeah. goes to d4 and has e c6 and e6 as potential outposts. So. Yeah, and then you can really think about your g4 move and just totally put that bishop in prison. Yep. So this yeah, is that look looked good as well. But in, in either case, queen d4 is a nice move, and it looks like white, despite being down a pawn, feels like he, he's in control. I think black needed the queen on the board and maybe these knight f4 ideas to, to try to create anything. Um, so unless I missed something, I think bishop f5 was considerably stronger than, than this. No, I'm totally with you. And, and the Ljubljana Turtles, like mentioned, they made it to the live semis in San Francisco last year, but... They say Kawabunga, he says Kamiyanga. It's a really <laughs> tough matchup here. <laughs> Kamiyanga, yes. That sounds like that's what you would read maybe in, in the subtitles when someone jumps in the pool. <laughs> I actually really like that last name. It's pretty awesome. Um, so, okay. Is MVL playing yet? That's what I'm looking at nonstop. No, I don't see any MVL. Yeah, I don't see MVL either. So who is playing? Ariantari is playing. Okay, they're early in that game. That's yeah, not... there's Johan Solomon is playing uh, Sebastian Joa, and he he's got a let's just call it a space advantage. Oh my! I just pulled the I pulled <laughs> the board up. That is um, that's a space advantage and then some. It honestly looks like whites up like four pawns because I just <laughs> opened the board and I see pawns of B four, C four, E four, F four, and is John Bartholomew playing black right now? Yeah, exactly. Just uh, trying to trying to be real solid there. Looks like the queen went for a journey to <laughs> e5, a5, b6. I hope. I really hope John is listening because JB knows I love him. But he plays that Scandinavian, and sometimes he gets in positions like this, and I just hit, you know, I smack my head and be like, "You, you did this to yourself. Right? You yeah. only have yourself to blame." And what is this knight doing on a6? What I don't is know. this? Looks a terrible, terrible position. And watch Black just win in a couple moves. That's what's going to happen because. You know, although it, the space advantage is huge for white, it's not clear exactly how you make progress. Because you can't go e5 yet with that knight on b1 hanging. Okay, white's just much better. I'm just trying to make it seem like black has something cheery in the position, but it looks so bad. Yeah, it looks pretty bad. There's no, like, e5 met by f5, c5 met by b5. There's, there's no redeeming qualities here. And bishop e3 is a, is a pretty easy next move. Um, yep. And then we can start developing with knight c3 or knight, knight bd2. And, and yeah, once you get the pieces off the last rank, a couple moves later, it's just going to be time for c5, e5, b5. Uh, all these pushes are going to be killer. Yeah, this is ugly. This is, ugh. I'm just like, I can't look at this one anymore either. So what can he, I look he at? He looks like he's, uh, Johan Solomon looks like he's in good position to, um, to try to pull uh, a point there for... Um, for the team, and uh, Sjorborn Ringdahl Hansen is playing Matthew Cornet. That's Tokras against Vincent Masuka. Okay, I just pulled it up. I also pulled up MVL's game. They just got started. It's a Berlin, so we don't have to worry about that yet. But <laughs> oh, um, perfect, yeah. But I pulled up the Torbjorn versus Matthew Cornet, and okay, so White is up a pawn. Yeah, I think it's this. Uh, I was going to say, you can get this from a London system. They actually got it from Karo Khan, but it's basically identical. Um, and you actually end up winning, uh, you win material, but uh, you have to deal with this B file pressure and just A5, A4, Rook B8, very sort of easy, easy moves to make. But here it doesn't look like black has the same counterplay as in some of those lines, right? Because um, you can't go Rook B8 yet as I'll throw in a Knight C5 check. Right. So, you know, the worst thing that can happen for black is if I go, well, actually, maybe knight c5 check right now makes perfect sense. Um, but essentially, I get my knight to c5, play b4, and what may be seen as a weakness with his backward pawn on b2 immediately becomes a strength in terms of a pass pawn. So, yeah, yeah, knight c5 check looks like a good move to throw in here. Yeah, knight c5 looks good. Even, like, 
bishop d6 knight c5 trying to play b4 next yeah um, you're just very quick on the side of the board but i like your knight c5 actually that that just looks uh like clearly the best move because even if we want to play knight c5 and b4 uh i want to play knight c5 first because I, I don't think it's in black's interest to take that no your rook on b6 is trapped actually because you go rook b7 i go bishop a6 and i <laughs> that's funny trap yeah, that rook it's totally trapped so this looks really bad for Torbjorn, and yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know even know what to say about his position right now because I'm I just think he's in a terrible shape. So okay, sorry Torbjorn, you know. Oh wait, Georg Meyer won a game against Doctor Burger Burger. The burger the burger goes down. So Meyer won on time in an end game where he was up a pawn. So in typical Georg Meyer fashion. From the white side of a French this time, he, um, he wins this game. And it ended up in a two bishops versus bishop and knight where Georg was up a pawn. So, yeah. makes sense. It's very Georg Meyer-like position. Right, right. And... I, ooh, Inna Agris has two seconds left. So, I'm yes. hopping over that game. And yeah. she is trying to One defend... One second. Oh, she lost in time. But it also was a lost position. It was so. a lost position. What, was it a lost position a couple moves ago? I didn't see that. Let me check. King, King G6 after move 67. And then in that position, I was wondering, you know, Rook A4. Ah, oh, yes. Rook A4. And that way, if King takes, you check from the side. Okay, this is important for the viewers. You give a check. And if King G5, then you can just leave your Rook on the 6th rank. So that when White... So let's say go Rook B6. You go F6. Then I bring my Rook down to B1 and check you from behind. So you always so that's why you actually study those end games. It's not because you know they're they're necessarily difficult, but when you have like two seconds, you need to have those laser instincts that you know you just play rook a four in that position. You don't play rook g four because then king f six, and and all of a sudden uh, that position is super tough as well. Although probably still holdable, I would say after king g eight, I think you still have good chances. Yeah, king g eight because you want your king on the short side. You want your rook on the long side. So, so that, a, a lot of uh, errors committed by Black there from what was probably a dead drawn position for a, more than a couple moves. Yeah, this is, um, you know, Divretsky, rest in peace. He uh, would yeah. not be happy to see the end game no. technique in this one. But uh, okay, that uh, it's tough to play these end games when you have no time on the clock. You're playing a GM. It um, it doesn't get much more difficult than that. Speaking yeah. of not getting much more difficult, Raphael versus Stewie Griffin. Um, Ooh, the game's not over move. yet, but. <laughs> looking a little difficult yeah. huh yeah and actually there's a really nice tactical setup here if bishop takes d5 for black uh white has this move rook c8 check knight uh -huh. takes c8 and the queen e8 checkmate just <laughs> oh man but oh it's just terrible it's really bad you know what i'm actually threatening in this position uh oh it, it's too bad if you moved your bishop unfortunately bishop d5 covers it but i want to play queen takes f7 and then rook c8 mate. oh but, you're you're uh, i'm just having too much fun here yeah, we can't get everything that we want in life. This is nasty, though. This is going to be... Uh, I mean, the queen on a8 is self-trapped. <laughs> right? It's like you, you put it there, and then you entombed it yourself. Yep. And the knight on b8 can't move either. Yikes. I mean, bishop I can't... Bishop even... f5 is a nice move, though. It, it you know, puts the bishop on prees and, and just sets up pretty much every winning tactic. Yep, just threatens... Takes away the king's escape route, and then so threatens a lot of checkmates. Uh, bishop e6 also would have been really good, of course. Um, just hitting the f7 pawn, but then bishop takes d5, and you actually have to calculate those things. So bishop f5 is just a much smarter move. Covering that escape square, threatening ideas. Well, actually, I don't know what the exact threat is. I just don't see a move for black. Yeah, here, I mean, I guess there's no... Oh, queen well, d8. Queen d8. Queen d8. <laughs> queen d8. <laughs> Yeah. That's, a, that's a pretty good threat. So after bishop d5, you don't even need to get fancy with rook c8. You just play queen d8, mate. Okay, that, that means this game is going to be over soon. Yeah. Sad. Very, yeah, very no, sad. This, this will be a, definitely a point for the turtles. Um, trying to look at some of the other games uh, in that match. Okay, so I see David Stavanovich only has 40 seconds left, so I think that's the same match. Yeah, that's the one we were looking at. It's it, basically White reclaimed his pawn now and is still in the commanding position that we saw before. So uh, that's looking like a point for the Raptors if, if I had to put my money somewhere. Oh, boy. You see Ender CCZ saying, like a Queen H1, we remember. Right, Amon and Robert? I remember that Queen H1. 
Aman, I haven't received my queen though. You you put it in a box. Did you only well, send can, it to Danny? The thing is, uh, Canada Post has been on strike recently, so uh, yeah, the the delivering of queens was wasn't the highest priority. Okay. The, you know, the wish list and stuff. That's very uh, fair. I know Danny was excited for it, but it's on its way. The famous, it's in the mail. Okay. Well, I, I can't wait to receive it because you know I, I earned that queen in the corner. Oh yeah, no, 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 definitely deserved. <laughs> Oh, man. So, Mr. Kamiyonga, he just has a much better position. Knight f5 coming, winning a pawn. d6 and h6 are hanging. Right. Maybe he'll play knight c8 just for um, the laughs, just to win d6 as well. So, it's all Kamiyonga here, unfortunately, for Mr. Stevanovic. Stefa- Ste- Stevanich? Stevanich. I'm, like, adding syllables. Well, Ste- Stefanovic, isn't that, like, a pretty good tennis player? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just adding, you know, it feels like there should be a, an Ovich, right? But yeah, just, a couple, couple extra syllables in there. Yeah. Um, the MVL game is actually, you know, for my, for my Berlin standards, it's, it's at a decent level of, uh, of interest. Um, oh, this is kind of juicy. Yeah. So my first question is, if you take on E5 for black, am I going to push F5 or am I going to recapture? I think I'm going to push F5. Well, they're not my pieces, Robert, so F5, of course. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally with you. You know me. I'm, yeah. I'm happy to sacrifice material when it's not mine, but it actually seems very standard, right? Because yeah. you take on E5. If I take back on E5, yes, I sort of have this passed pawn, but it's one that's actually easy to attack, and he played F5 immediately. And right. the point is now that I have this 3 on 2 on the king side, right? From the F to H files, I have this pawn chain. Okay, now it's 2 on 1 after HG, HG. And bishop c6, I just move up, king g3. Yeah. Knight d8 just wins. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, that's just game over. Uh, maybe he wants to take and play bishop e7, bishop h4. Tricky, tricky. Ooh, look at you. Wait, that's actually really annoying. Wait, so that, that backfires. Looks winning for white, but all of a sudden bishop e7 happens, and bishop h4 check, this king has nowhere good to go. Get mated. Because I think... He might have been counting on the fact that knight d8 was always there after a bishop uh, c6 check move was played, when actually it's just simply not the case. Yep. So what do I do instead? So bishop e7 is a big threat. Huh. Yeah, because now bishop e7, I mean, I don't care if you're playing knight d8 or not. I'm playing bishop e7 regardless. Right. And if I play a move like bishop g5, you can play bishop d6 and just get your bishop safeguarded by the c-pawn. And threaten the e4. Yep. But actually, maybe I'm okay with that. Bishop g5, bishop b6, knight g7, e4 check, rook takes d6, pawn takes, and like I have two pass pawns as well. Well, don't forget, even after e, uh, e4 check, you could play bishop f4. Oh, bishop f4 is just stronger, of course. So maybe but, after but, he played bishop g5. <sighs> I love it when I play like Maxim. It just yeah. makes me feel so <laughs> good, good about myself. <laughs> so um, if bishop d6... Um, I'm just going to take g7, I guess. I can also yeah. play rook uh, a d1 and just try to, then try to sack on d6. I like that too. The other thing you could do is technically you could play knight d8 and then also sack on d6 after if you just wanted to simplify. But uh, it seems like in your rook a d1 or in a g7, white is actually you know pushing the envelope. He's actually taking something uh, and playing for, for an advantage there. And I actually am looking in the game chat on chess.com, and Huachapori says, Knight d8 missed. And they go, uh, William Chess goes, no, he has, hasn't missed it. Go watch his stream. He's commentating. So apparently he was talking about this exact position, which makes sense because he's MVL. He's not missing these. Uh, he's not missing stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So he went rook ad1, just trying Very to nice. pile up the sacrifice. Oh, I like, I like this move a lot, Robert. You and uh, Max seem channeling. Yep, and David Stevanovich, got to go back to you. Stevanich, not Ste- I keep adding the Ovich. He's down to four seconds left and has a losing endgame. So yeah, I just pulled his game here. up. Yeah, White's plan is very easy. The knight keeps the king away from this uh, d-pawn. So he can do yeah. king d4, king e5, king f6, king g7, things like that, and just uh, easily mop up the pawns king there. King c6 and just uh, check in knight b7. Yep, that's a young lady being promoted to on d8. Okay, so we're gonna get off of you, David Stevanich. I got it, Stevanich, Stevanich, not Stevanovich. 
Uh, how's Rafael doing? He's up a queen for a rook against he's just, uh, Jose Herrera. He's dominating here. The, the rook takes a little too long to coordinate into the game. Right, as long as that rook doesn't land on f1 or d1 or something like that, um, white is just winning. So yeah, here, bishop f6. Yeah, that's g7's hanging with mate. That's over. Okay, a nice win for Mate uh, Shevenik. Very nice guy, by the way. Extremely nice person. And um, he's winning that game for his turtles. And they're a very good um, team. They have great camaraderie. They're all good friends. So it's nice to see them Yeah, they well. just made a team pretty much out of a bunch of friends. Yep. Perfect. Okay, back to MVL, because that's what we all, we're all here for, right? Is Maxime mm -hmm. vachet le -Gruff. Rook h7 played. I mean, in a position like this, it's like, first of all, knight d8 is, is on top. Uh, second of all, just even a move like rook takes d6 just voluntarily seems pretty decent. Yeah. I like knight d8. Feels like you yeah. can't really go wrong winning an exchange there. Takes, takes. And then is he going to go for e4 or is he going to try to play, I don't know, like knight f6 or something? Just feels like black is so passive in those positions, right? So, like, even if you get the exchange back after knight d8 check, we swap and the take on d6 eventually, like, the knight on g8 is just dominated by the bishop on d8. Um, the two on one on the king side for the white pawns is very nice. Doesn't yeah, look very no, good. that should be, should be losing. Yeah, not good. How are uh, the teammates doing in this match? Who, uh, the actually, back rows? Yeah, the back rows. So, let's see at Etienne. Can he get revenge for Alexander? So Etienne Bacro is white against Wouter Spalman. Huh? And what is knight c4? Why did he do that? Like, what was wrong with just king h8 instead of... Oh, there's um, knight e6, I like guess. knight e6, I but, guess. I, but does it make it any better if I take on c4 and just win a pawn? So, but then the bishop's not hitting g4, at least. So then he could play queen f7 afterwards. Ah, 96 is queen f7. Gotcha. So pin, pin city. That makes a lot of right. sense. So knight c4, and then let's say takes, takes, check, king h8. And then in that position, you know, you really start to miss your light squared bishop with a move like g3 played it as back right. row there. Y your best move is to go g3 to g2 as white. Right, push yes. the pawn back. Yeah, hope he doesn't notice. <laughs> okay, so maybe knight c4 is much smarter than I initially thought, and a move like a4 doesn't probably is not enough to challenge there because rook b8 can be a response. Um, doesn't help too much. Huh. Right. Although if I had to choose, I would say sure play a4. If if I'm just going to get a free open a file, I'll take it. Right. A4 rook b8 takes a takes and then decide what to do because I think giving yourself the A-file there is probably a good thing. Definitely seems like it. Um, and th at the very least, you can use that as some sort of counterplay um, later in the game to try to throw a rook down in the A7 square. Right. Hmm, so I'm also a little stuck here for what to do. I'm sort of committed to this long diagonal uh, stuff working with my knight on G5. And, you know, if you kind of strike out with this idea, then all of a sudden F2 is really loose, the light squares are weak, H6 starts to happen. Right. Right. And that's why this bishop is so important in E2, like you were saying before. Just It controls the F3 square. It makes the life, light squares feel a lot safer. Uh, and he took on C4 as soon as I finished saying that. So, Right, because it's almost, though, like, what, what do you do if you don't take? Because, you're again, you're just so committed to this idea. Well, some of us are afraid of commitment, Amon. Are you, Robert? Are you afraid of commitment? No, but just some well, of us. Yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah I'm not, I'm not afraid of commitment. You know, I've... Uh, Never mind. Never mind. For, for, for another time. Also, I'm going to pull up the Johan Solomon game because we hated Black Expedition before, and I, ju I just despise it now. Like I, It went from oh, hatred man. towards just utter disgust. <laughs> oh. Like this Bishop on G2. Speed oh, 5 is just, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah. Gotta, gotta kill it before it lays eggs. Yeah, this is just... The bishop on g2 is so strong. The c5 pawn not only attacks b6, defenses the pass pawn on d6. And it's even material. Like, I'd have to sacrifice a rook to get a position like this. And Johan Solomon is just like, yeah, it's even, but I'm just... Actually, suffering. why don't you take my rook on f1? I might still take white. Yeah, actually, you know, <laughs> I, I don't disagree. 
yeah, no, this is a really nice position. Uh, they're getting low on time, but that only goes in White's favor here as long as he doesn't get dangerously low. Um, but this this will certainly be a win for the, the gnomes, barring uh, something incredible happening. By the way, people are very happy in the chat, Amon. Jolly Bishop says, this is a great partnership. Keep it up, guys. And I don't even want to, I don't even know how to pronounce the next one. Jazon Din Alt says, Botez and Danny are awesome, but two times GM commentaries, it's just paradise. Wow, feels good. We're, we're getting a lot of praise here. And yeah. uh, I, think, I think it's well earned. It's, you know, it's one of those uh, pairings that, you know, the commentating uh, system just, just wasn't ready for. It's true. It's like they purposely kept us apart because they knew that once the, the team was put together, it would be the dream team that's like yeah. stood by each other to the very end. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, that username I'm not going to say. Well, I'm going to say it. Poop God says, I love you two strapping lads. Strapping lads. Um, yeah. Keep the compliments uh, coming because much, much like um, a woman, they actually fuel me. They keep me going. Yeah. Uh, I, I need them to, to survive here. This is your version of Red Bull. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'd like some chat sponsorship. Just nice comments all the time. Okay, so now that I'm going to stop looking at the chat, where do we go from here? Well, um, the game that I was looking at, I just lost it for a sec, but um, the game that I was looking at was Tari against uh, Demonte Cornet. Okay, Demonte. So from that same match. Yep, I got it open. And Arian Tari is well-known world junior champion, uh, one yep. of the leading players for Norway. Uh, Demonte Cornet, one of the strongest women in the world, and a very talented international master for the Khan Blitzstreams. Yeah, and she is, uh, I, I think I can say notoriously at this point, but once again, down on time, very, very low, 15 seconds. Um, and she's facing this pawn on B6, which uh, is very, very close to, to becoming queen, or at least planting itself on B7 and just being a total, total nuisance. Um, so white's clearly better here, but uh, how do we... How do we uh, continue the position? Black doesn't really have any threats, which is kind of nice. Right. And it looks like white is, you know, white is up a pawn. This pawn on b6 is just extra. Right. Um, and actually, really what's missing is a g pawn for black. Right? It's like, I was making these jokes before with Alexandra that like, sometimes it looks like there's a normal position, but a piece has just been thrown off the board. And here, that's the pawn on g7. Like, where is that pawn? It's just gone. Yeah, it's just missing. Um, but I don't really see how black can garner enough counterplay in time because B pawn should just push itself to B7 uh, in the very yeah. near future. Well, what is white going to do now? Okay, rook E1 was played. I think queen E3 was a bit of a disturbing move to face. Right, with rook takes F3 sacrifices uh, right. on tap. And yeah, if I'm not going to have that G pawn, I want to maybe at least make some threats, Wait. King H8, try to use the file. What about just pawn takes D5 here, throwing queen takes B6? If, pawn oh. takes D5. So Looked good. Yeah, so rook f f8 did not look good. No, no, no. This is pan these are panic moves now. Yeah, so it's, I've got no time. I'm down a pawn. Let me Maybe get desperate. Yeah, yeah this okay. Is... This is very bad now. Now even c4 looks looks crushing. Yeah, Bishop c4. takes h3. I'm not sure I care about. No, but look at that b7. It's a rook b7 or d6 here. Yeah, d6. It's gonna Protect. sack though. Take uh, take rook f5. Do you do rook f5? Yeah, because queen d5 check and the rook on b7 was hanging. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, so yeah. rook f5 with a check here. Yeah, rook g3. Okay, that's and now all. rook f5 and e6 is over. Yep. Oh, he keeps missing it. <laughs> Somebody put this guy on puzzle rush. Yeah, seriously. Just like rook takes bishop. He's going to do it now when like it's too late. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, c4, c5, and then rook takes bishop. Exactly. Like it just. Showing that it works whenever he wants to. Rook takes f5 is about to happen. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. <laughs> it takes e6, takes d7, rook then, e8, c5. Exactly. Okay, now he's thinking on. Just play rook. There it is. <laughs> the third time's the charm. Exactly. He knew it was there. He just wanted to prove that he could do it what he felt like on his own terms. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Anna Chess is in the chat. What's up, Anna? Anna, how you doing? Do, 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 do. Okay, let's get off this game. Let's go to the MVL game because MVL's king's on G8. He promoted. Nice. So uh, it's a queen now? Yeah. Well, the G-pawn's also about to become a queen. So Yeah, this this looks like the pretty much the same. I think you just play rook h4 here to make it easier. I, I, maybe it doesn't matter. G7, and you're going to play rook h4 or rook f4. But 
Yep. And I think I would play. Uh, I played G7. He's got the bridge set up already, right? So he's got. True. Right. Yeah. He's got to play rook takes B2, right? If, if you're even going to try here, you got to take a pawn before you lose your rook. Yep. And but, then now just bring the king out with king f7. Or rook g4. Rook g4 also works. And that's what he did. It's probably more precise. Yeah, what can I say? I mean, me and MVL were just one of the, two of the top practitioners of, of this position. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're like his secret second. Like, it's so secret that you don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So king h7, rook f7, yeah. only move. And then yeah. king g6, and yeah. then the king will take on g7. Okay, whatever. King h6, he'll king take. H6. He wants to take with the rook, I think, and then just bring the king back ASAP. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cutting the black king uh, off, threatening the a-pawn. Oh, this, that's very nice. This white king just runs back. Yeah, this is easily winning. So a nice game by MVL, who showing off his elite preparation. He's like, oh, I wish I saved this game when I was playing Karyakin. But okay, <laughs> yeah. David Klein will have to do. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, I'll just win this game instead. Yep. Okay, so MVL now just goes king g5, king f5. Sorry, can we we got to go back to Johan Solomon. Uh, if he loses this game, I'm about to be... Wait, how is great. Black... This is... Oh, he brought his no, rook! He's rook! Oh, what? my gosh! Oh, what? my gosh! No way! How no! How did that position? How did... He, okay, when he resigns, because he just blundered his rook, and I don't like laughing at people... But let's go back to this position and move. What move was it when we first saw it? Like 15. Oh, At, my goodness. Like, we saw the move 16 or something. And we're like, look how much space white has, right? Then we saw it again on move, I don't even know. There's like, let's see. Here, I move 31. We're like, I can give a rook and white's still better. So how did he blow this? He, he let the, the B pawn actually got to B3. To a, and then okay. it got protected by the bishop. Uh, that's pretty annoying. And then, okay, black traded queens and white sack to get rid of that B pawn, and it still looked pretty good for white, but then something went wrong again, and he blundered all his pieces. Okay. Oh, my goodness. There, yeah, there's so many ways to improve here. At the end of the day, it's, it's speed chess. They, they were getting pretty low on time, but uh, the bishop E4 move at the very end blunders the rook, so he, he can't even like, try to salvage uh, the position he's messed up. It's just, it's just lost. That's brutal. Oh, man. That hurt to watch, honestly. And I'm opening yeah. up uh, all the other games because there are so many, and you can tell me where... To, I can't... I feel bad that that just happened. But it was also... I mean, it's really unbelievable that that just happened, honestly. Yeah, well, you're talking to someone who's very, very familiar with Rook Hanks. We've all been there, Aman. I'm here for you. The you chess to... bras are actually pro probably hung the most ropes in the Pro League. Is there a prize for that, by the way? Don't think so, but the prize was just giving your opponents sheer joy and happiness. So I guess that's yeah. prize enough. Benevolence. Yes. Benevolence, okay. my old friend. So who... No games are in too much time trouble, so we can just... No, the one that seems closest is uh, the one back in that first match with uh, Alexander Bacro against uh, Quinton Ducamo. Okay, where are you, Quinton? I don't see... Quinton 94 against Backy Alex. There you are. Okay. So what's going on here? One, two, five, one, two, five. Even material. Yeah. Um, F2. The question is, after knight takes e5, are you playing rook c5? Probably. Yeah, it looks like it. Because that way I attack your knight and the c7 pawn. I can even play bishop e5, but then I don't like bishop d6 for black. It's annoying. Yes. Right, so yeah. if you think you're getting away with this, take, take, rook c6. Oh, actually, yeah, then there's always rook d2 for black, and that's... Yeah, if I was playing that, I'd probably play king e2 first, and then bring the rook in, but even still, it looks completely unnecessary. Yeah, he took on c5, he could take on c7 first. Um, the good thing about keeping the bishop on f4 is it covers the d2 square. So rook takes c7 is just a free pawn. There's no rook d2 as a response. If you take on e5 first, and after pawn takes e5, then black is going to try to plant that rook on d2 and claim compensation in the form of activity. So I would play probably bishop takes e5, f takes e5, king e2. And start or king e2 first. Yeah. So now if rook d7, bishop e5, you just can go up a clean pawn. Don't have to worry about your second rank. No, this looks very, very nice for Quentin Ducamont. Yeah. 
it should be five rookie seven f four. So we don't even. There's no tricks. No tricks. Yep, rookie seven f four. Oh, and even rookie seven, there's rook takes c seven. If I want to take that pawn, so right. I, ha I have options on how to proceed. Oof, these are some of the weakest pawns I've ever seen. Yeah. They're not even, I, I want, remember I actually played a game in the, the Reykjavik Open in 2017 against the Jordan Van Freist, yep. and uh, I played a rook end game. It was even material, but he had pawns on h7, uh, g6, a7, b6, and I had h4, f4, c4, a4. Oof. <laughs> it was a disaster. Oof. Disaster game. That's not even like Swiss cheese. That's just like <laughs> worse. I don't even know what's just worse like, than that. No, it's like cheese cheese strings or something. <laughs> but people like those cheese strings, right? So, I know, yeah. I would have preferred one in that moment. <laughs> Do you watch BoJack Horseman? I'm familiar with it. Okay, well, there's an episode involving some string cheese. I, I won't ruin the episode for you, but it's, it's just oh, fun. Great. It doesn't play, like, it's just a central theme of that central episode. Theme. Well, any episode built around string cheese is worth watching. Yeah, I feel like you would really like that show. <laughs> I like a lot of the, I mean, yeah, I like South Park. I like a lot of these kind of like trashy humor shows. But the thing is, Bojack Horseman is deep. It's like a deep, like, comedy. It hits on, like, depression and, like, real themes of real life. It just has to, have, it has animals, so people think that it's, like, more of a joke. But anyway, we're, I've got way off target here. Whew. Back to chess. Reel it in, yeah. Yeah, I got to reel it in. Yeah. No, so this is going to be a point for the mosquitoes. Um, Although... And... Did he just give up some of his pawns here? Although I like rook g5 and, and using the a pawn. Yeah. So can the black king just try to go king c8, king b7, and? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's. I guess it's definitely not in the bag. That's. I mean, we're playing a rook end game after all. Right. So the one pawn might not be enough, and I feel like it was better for white earlier, and something went a little bit wrong because his rook on a2 is actually very annoying here. Okay, I hate that move pawn c6. It might not even be a bad move, but it just let, seems to let that king, the white king, into the action more easily. Yeah. Not to Maybe mention... Maybe h4, h5. Okay. Black Here, offered a draw. Good. Black offered a draw. You got to give it to the kid. He's, he's a, got spunk. He's confident. <laughs> so rookie two, yep. Put that rook on a2 and then bring the king in. Yeah, this should be... If you don't... Yeah, the thing is rook... Yeah, now rook... Is he going to play Rook E7? Play G3 first. Rook E7 looks good because you get to A6. Yep. And if King B8, I would play King C4. I would ignore the H7 pawn. So King C4 yeah. here kind of forces Rook C1 check, and then just King D4. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Nice move. Yeah, King, now this is over. King C5, threatening King B6 and King takes C6. And here, just take on H7. And you'll play A6 next. A6, rook b7 check, king takes c6, that would win. Okay, he's going to take the g pawn now. Yeah, this is king b6. King b6. Or king c6, it doesn't matter, both are winning. Um, all right, so this is a win for Quentin Ducarmo. So what's the score of this match? It's going to be 6, six no, 7-5. 7-5. Uh-oh. Going into the last round. Uh oh, that's a big loss for the migrants. Yeah, I think remember it all comes back to that first game where Alexander Bakro. I mean, if you take that win and you give it to the other side, it's a tied match. Yeah, and, and Bakro is to be zero and three now. So instead of winning that first game, essentially he lost it, and now he's just gotten the donut since. Yeah. No, oh, that's not good. I feel bad for him. Nobody likes to be you know the goat on their team. The the, the donut scorer. Yeah. Also, sorry to change the game here, but Hushinbeth versus yep. um, Kirill Alexenko. Speaking yep. of donuts, Alexenko lost both of his games. Look at his queen on A8. Is that familiar to you, uh, Robert, at all? Um, do you, do you want to <laughs> still be co-commentators? Because I can leave. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I actually didn't remember it until a good member of, a good faithful member of the chat brought it up. Yeah. It wasn't on the tip of my tongue, but uh, that's, that's why it's nice to have the chat around, wouldn't you say? Uh, no, I... I <laughs> would say that it's actually really painful for you to bring up such hurtful memories that, you know, this, this queen on A8 is actually much better than the queen that Danny and I had. Cause the queen yeah, she looks fantastic now. <laughs> yeah. She's got the full length of the diagonal here. Yeah. 
No, she she's actually she's got her her life together. Yeah. Hey, hey, Jackie the Swede. Oh gosh. Um, okay, so C three play. Just trying to open up the position more. The E pawn can't capture the knight in F four because you don't want to lose your bishop on E seven. So what should C3 black do here? Surprising you, man. Bishop F five check. Sure. Bishop F five. King A one. This forces queen takes because of the check. Right. Bishop F five is annoying. Um, but I feel like are we almost losing? It's very the knight comes into c six after, but I mean you know bishop, bishop f five or actually after queen takes pawn takes knight does that work? Super sketchy, but we have bishop f five check after. Maybe, maybe I can have rook takes d seven there even. I don't rook really know what's going on. Yeah, rook d seven. It's like getting funky. I actually was thinking queen takes d seven here, but I don't think it works. Ooh, that's a cool move. I was like, okay, let me just sack the queen. It's not mine. So queen d7, rook d7, rook d7. I have some ideas with rook attacking your bishop on e7, the b7 square. So what do I do? Queen c3, bishop f5, so king a1. Oh, wait a second. King a1, then you take on d1. Yeah, but now knight c6 exists. So yeah. a little, ah, rook c8. First. But queen, oh, queen e3, you go bishop c5. But there must be a move. Queen e1 probably keeps the... Piece or queen area. queen d2 as well because if you take on f4 I take back with my queen with check mm -hmm. actually you can play queen e3 i don't know you can't play queen e3 um hmm. queen e3 bishop c5 was what's bothering me yeah because i was going to say even after that as long as your queen covers f4 you just take back with check and take the bishop on f5 right so queen g3 here but queen g3 then queen e4 is what annoys me like i don't want to allow that black queen into the game but queen e1 is also met by queen e4 probably yeah actually black can play queen e4 no matter what here this this has unraveled pretty nicely for black i think well which means that queen g3 might be the move because queen g3 queen e4 i can go knight d5 oh no you take on d5 uh oh yes queen e3 so probably bishop c5 queen d2 is what he wants to play so why didn't he start with queen d2, if that was the case? I'm not sure. Maybe he wanted to close the c-file for, for there's no back rank mates in some ways. But then bishop d4 comes. Like I feel like you're helping yeah, black. I agree. I agree. The, but this is now two bishops and two incredibly discoordinated knights. Yeah. The knight on a5 and an f4 are just like, first of all, the one f4 is kind of hanging. Bishop d4, like you said, threatens rook c2. Queen e4, I mean, this is probably very close to winning, just outright winning for black. Yep, this is a... Which is an important bounce back game for him because, I mean, going like 0-3 on the day as a, as a strong GM like, like he is is, is a severe underperformance. Absolutely, and they need it, right? Because uh, Berlin is up 5.5, 3.5, which is surprising because Berlin was up 3.5 half and, half and it just seemed like they were running away with it. But if Kirill Alexianko could right the ship and win this game, well, then they're right back in it, um, the snowballs. Right. Yep. So let's see. And in that same match, uh, Georg Meyer looks like he's headed towards a draw against Leon Mons. No, don't, I, I'm shocked. Georg Meyer's heading towards a draw? No way. Call uh, the I'll police. Say it, I'll say it again. There's, he is heading, just confirmation. I, I'm getting radioed information. He is heading towards a draw. How come when I click on everybody else's game, I see it from the white side, but when I click on Georg Meyer's game, I see it from the black's perspective, from Georg Meyer's perspective every time. Okay, I'm. Letting chess.com know that they have a Georg Meyer bias in the code. It's in the code, yes. It's, uh, it's written in. Yeah, it's just Georg Meyer gets to be on the front of my screen here. Anyway, so with the black pieces, he's even by material, but I'm worried about the C pawn. Yeah. King so, D6, I guess bishop B7, knight D5. Yeah, knight D5 holds everything. And... So who's the thing about that bishop, though, is that after knight d5, if I can play king c7, suddenly I'm really scared for white. Right. In fact, knight d5 just looks like a good move here. Yeah, it looks like a great move. Is c7 going to be the response? Takes with the knight. And then rook b4, do I get away with this? Yeah, but at the very least, I'm going to play knight e6 and oh, yeah, probably or, pawn. Or knight d5, right, and just take the f4 pawn. Wow. Right. So Georg Meyer might just be better here. Well, I don't want to go that far because there's like it's just that the the last move instead of Bishop A6, we, we could have played C7, for example. 
which is why I thought we were really heading towards a draw. But Bishop A6, he got a little optimistic and maybe it doesn't pay off after knight D5. Well, knight D5 actually have rook D3, so you need to be very careful about that. Knight D5, rook D3. Right, because I pin your knight right. and I threaten to take it and go C7 and things like that. Or C7 right. first. That's true. Actually, that's, uh, that's very, very important. So can I start with king, nope, king c7, you just take b4. So, hmm. Although that might not be that bad, king c7, rook takes, knight d5, and then bring swing the rook over to like f8 or d8 or something. Yeah, I guess it's the worst side of a draw for black, but yeah, should looks holdable. So rook f8 was played. Rook b4, and then king. Okay, so same same sort of principle here. Yeah, if I play like rook f7 and knight h5, I feel like I should be should be okay. It's so hard to coordinate. Sometimes this, this bishop, like supported by a pawn there, can be great at restricting things, but sometimes it can just feel totally nonsensical, like just it gets in your own way. Yep. Completely agree. And king g2, knight h5. So king g2, knight h5, king f3, g5. Yeah, that looks like it uh, holds. The rook d7 check, and we just call it a day and make a draw. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a draw. Yeah. Leon. Yeah, so this, uh, but this match, isn't it heavily in, in the Berlin Bears' uh, favor? Um, I think it's going to even up because Kirill Alexenko, I think, is, I mean, he's at the very least, he's better uh, in his game against Nicholas Ruschenbeck, which we just came from. Um, and then what were the other games? as part of that match. It was uh, the Burger is playing in a Agress, and that game is, the players are very long time in that one as well. Oh, in a Agress has the advantage here on the white side of this end game. I mean, it's relatively level in terms of material. It's, it's completely yeah. even, but white is a little bit ahead in terms of uh, getting the pieces for So like King C3, King B4 is one option. A4, A5 is like the oh, first like thing A4, I think about. A5. Um, and you can you can always choose to play a4 a5. You can bring the king in um, at some point. I like this setup for white a lot. Yeah, a5. I really want a5. Hey Aman, Kalita yes. Rush says you're so serious today. Hey Aman, you're so serious today. Well, that's a pretty fair comment, right? I mean, I'm even wearing my my I got my chess.com polo on here. Right? Uh, we all make mistakes. <laughs> you know, uh, this, this says serious. Uh, you know, got the collar on. It, it's like you're you're taking a, a purple, a purple haired crayon, and you're you're caging him. You're, you're putting him in a, in a polo, and you're restricting him. And really, he just wants to be loose and and, uh, and just not able to be in my environment. Whenever I hear purple crayon, I think of Harold, because I think of that kids book, Harold and <laughs> Purple Crayon. Um, just, you know, the literary genius that I am, thanks. Of. Yeah, yeah, no, we all uh, started somewhere. <laughs> what do you mean started? That's where I still am. <laughs> what do you mean, yesterday? Yeah, exactly. Gosh, it hurts. The truth hurts. Um, okay, so white in Agra still pressing this one. She's going to bring her king in. King can come up the A file to B5. I like yep. that she delayed the capture on B6 because sometimes it opening up the A file can be good for blacks for some counterplay. And black doesn't actually want to take on a5 to allow the white rook to take and then put pressure on the a7 pawn. So this sort of delayed capture is, has been very good for, um, for white. But she needs to play more quickly. She only has 20 seconds left. Yeah, the time is, is always an issue. So the king is going to activate and try to oh. get all the way into g3, which is a scary notion. But right now the rook on d6 is, is limiting that very nicely. King b4 looks like the move. Yep, king b4 looks very logical. Okay, rook d5 is not bad either. Yeah, wanting to play rook b5. Uh, at this point, are we bailing out and playing rook f7 and then just trying to run the king to g, g3? That, that's probably what I would do. Do you have time to do that, though? So rook f7, I just go rook b5 and... King f4, takes, takes, takes. Uh-oh. The second rook is coming to d6. So it looks like... That's in okay, though. Uh, rook a2 and then rook f8. Yeah, rook f8 only move because rook f6 is checkmate. Right, so if you rook g2, you get mated, so g2 hangs, c5. Who's winning this race? c6? Ooh, this, this is always scary, though, because you get so many pawns 
Rook takes h3, c7. c7. Rook takes f6 is coming with check. Okay, so rook f6. Right, so take that with check. And rook, play rook c6. Rook uh, f to c6, and then put rook b8 on the board, right? Yeah, or rook f7, but yes. Yes. So. Actually, rook f7 might have been a lot better because of this move. Okay, but take, if you, no, you're not in time. King c5, h3, king b6. What's going on? Or king d6. D6, yeah. So e4, like, I, I don't you have to calculate this pawn race. So rook c1 here, e4. No, b, the b pawn's coming so quickly, though. So is the g pawn. <laughs> right, so king f3, b4, g4, b5, oh g3. Both pawns queen without check? This is going to be madness. <laughs> It might just be a draw, you know, that's the fun. Wait, I don't, I like, don't the, like this one. No, I don't like the king there. B4, go. No, no, this is a big mistake, I think. B5. And the big problem is you can't move your rook away either. So B6. This but is, if you move your rook away, you queen with check on C8. Or I take... Oh, uh, wait, so G2, B7, rook takes C7. Yes. And absolutely. then B8 equals queen. Wait, what is happening here? No, but I take with the, with the rook and play rook H7, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. <laughs> This doesn't feel right, though. Get a queen for, for black. Isn't black just up a pawn here? So rook takes g1, hg1, queen, queen c5 check. Maybe there's something better than queen c5. Maybe. Luckily, there's no way to like trade the queen off by force. But I feel like black is getting... I think this is winning, I have to say. So queen d4 here might be good. Yep. Or queen c5 and then queen d4. I like this move. So where do you put the king? I, I never, I never know. Well, the king on c7 is definitely misplaced. Queen f4 here. Okay, queen f4 was a good move. Was a very good move, yeah. That actually, that would have ran the pawn so fast. Yep. The king on c7 is definitely misplaced. So go king back to f3. Other than queen f1 check comes. So queen h6. That is not recommended. I would check on maybe c3 or maybe just pushing four. Yeah. May as well leave the king there for more uh, checking blocks. The thing is, this black king go d1, c2, b3, and the white queen is very limited. Okay, actually, maybe king b1 makes more sense. Uh, you just got to find the right... Wait, what? Yeah. So queen d1, there's queen e3 check. That makes the draw immediately. King b2, queen... Oh, that's wait, losing. wait, what? Why yeah. why queen f2? Queen b6 was much better. The blunders. The blunders. Time pressure. Yikes. Yikes. Um, by the way, Alexienko did win um, with the black pieces uh, against Nicholas Hushenbade. So uh, it feels like uh, that would have been you know the turnaround round for the, um, the bottom bottom snowballs. But then we also had Agress losing that game. So... The Berlin Bears are remaining on top, I think, seven, seven to five. Okay. And I see that <clears throat> MVL is in the final game of that match. They're down seven to five themselves. So I'm going to keep an eye on. They'll, they're, they're the first match to start, which means they'll be the first match to finish. But I'm right. just trying to keep an eye on all these games here to make sure we have everything covered. Um, yeah. So any other interesting games to go well, for? Actually, MVL is. <laughs> can't say I love his position either. Um, Looks like Belcher Spolman has kind of a nice uh, a nice game going, but maybe maybe that's not the case. The bishop on b two just looks looks phenomenal. Yeah, especially if White is able to get the move f four in and line the queen up with that bishop, then Black will be in a world of hurt. But I do love this knight on d five. Right, it's a very strong piece, and right. one of those things for White, you simultaneously want your pawn on a three and on a two at the same time. Yeah, because you want on a two to protect b three. But you want it on a3 to stop any knight b4. Yeah, you need it on a3 if I had to choose, unfortunately, for, for stopping knight b4. The other, yeah, if we can get f4 or even d4 as well, both moves look uh, look pretty good, h, h4, h5. So I think uh, Veldry Spoman can be pretty content with, with his position here. I would play c5 at some point for Maxime. Maybe not now, but I would try right. to play c5 because that pawn, you should definitely not capture it. Yeah. And eventually play queen e6 and throw my rook to b6 and try to yeah. go for b3. Because you it need some sort of counterpoint. Yeah. It has to be b3. Um, the other match that uh, um, 
is ongoing is the Barcelona Raptors and the Ljubljana, Ljubljana Turtles. Uh, Rafael is playing Sherman Trolls. And it looks like um, it looks like we are going to see what well, looks much better for, for Black at the moment. Hippolito. Rookie. Yeah, the Hippo. Yeah, this looks really good for Black. Wait, is R- Rook A3 check winning here? Rook A3 check. Is... Sack, sack that Rook, take on C3, promote the E pawn. King B3. Then Bishop then D2. Bishop. Um, yes. Yes, that should be winning. Sometimes I see tactics quickly, you know, it just, it just happens to me. Yeah, no, Rook A3 is a, a very cute move, actually. That definitely works. It might not even be necessary, but it just felt felt good. We also had Stewie Griffin just lost his game, uh, which is in this match. So another point for the Turtles going forward. So they take the they take the lead momentarily. Okay. Um, and then also in that match, the uh, Stevenich um, is looks like he's going to go down uh, in this in this game for sure. So that'll be a point for the uh, for the Raptors. How many points does this guy Alejandro have? Um, he's been doing extremely well. Well, he's got how many points does he have, and how many names does he have? That's two questions. I think this is their third game. So we saw him win that nice game with knight h8 check. Yeah. And he's about to win this one, so he has at least two points. I, I don't know exactly. He's been doing really well. For I, I'm guessing he's the board. Yeah, he's the board three. Well, he is uh, well on his way to victory here. Up two clean pawns against David Stevanich. I'm going to finally pronounce his name correctly. But uh, they're in the third round of their match. They're tied four and a half, four and a half. So this is a very important game because it's so, it's so neck and neck here. Um, yeah. How's, where's MVL's game? I, I just saw it and I lost. There it is. I think yeah. we should stick on that match because they're in their final round of the day. And yeah, so, this looks like a pretty... Pretty exciting uh, position as well. Like you know that something is going to crack open, and there it is, f4. But is it good? So f4, the idea is rook takes g6 is coming. They're right there's some sacrifices there, and e4, the immediate response. But what about f5? Right. Like if white just plays f5 and continues. I mean, I don't know how you don't play f5. Isn't f5 just like absolutely destroying? So F5, I guess I have to take it, right? You have to take it, yeah. That's so disgusting. (laughs) Wow. And then Rook G7 check, King H8, and what's the follow-up? So Rook G7, King H8, and then what? Do I just play like... Queen D1 to H5 or something? Yeah, it's just like if I I get something over there, I know it's over. I know it's game over. F5 takes Rook G7, all played, so we can... Let's definitely stay on this because this... Wow, you know. MVL might be going down here. If I'm MVL and I get one more move, I'm playing rook e5, right? Just to close, <laughs> to close the bishop off and to you know, try to sacrifice the exchange and maybe get a counterattack of my own. But um, you know, I don't think Spoman's in. But didn't Spoman beat Magnus last year? Uh, I think, yes. I recognize the name. I, I know what you're talking about. Well, I actually go way back with Woods or Spoman because I beat him in like the under 14 uh, World Youth Chess Championship or something. So I don't, wait, Rafael just lost on time. So that was the game we were looking at before where Black was uh, gonna promote the E-Pawn. So it looks like. Okay, but yeah, well, Black was winning that game. Anyway. Yeah, I'm just, I just saw that game come to its conclusion. But yeah, so right. Queen D1 played by Spolman, but now Rook E5 stops, Rook Queen, E5. stops Queen H5 and, and even stronger now that the queen's no longer in c2 because if you take me on e5, now you have problems with the a1 square, right? Like I clearly have some yeah. counter chances. And knight g4 is an idea to close the g file. So rook e5, right. I would play instantly, unless you know there might be something better, honestly. But that would be my after rook e5. Uh, I'm inclined to say that we don't take it, honestly. I don't think you should. Um, rook f8, man, I so incredible. Like, isn't queen h5? How is that not the move here? Queen h5 is their mate? Uh, I don't know. I was just hoping it was. <laughs> well, Queen h5 looks yeah, awesome. No, there's, so so let's see. Queen maybe h5 there's takes. Like, you have a discovered double check, but. Wait, but isn't. 
Uh, like rook takes f7, there's knight f6 somehow. And everything looks guarded. Yes, everything's protected. And rook g6, they try to play rook h6 mate. There's king h7. Yeah. Things are protected. Wow. Can, can I do one of those moves first and then play queen h5? Can you play like rook g1 to g2 and then play queen g1? Or queen f1 and then go queen g2, like something like that? Uh huh. That looks pretty awesome because if my queen's on g2, then I'm throwing rook h7 check and queen g7. Yeah, eight. then there's all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I mean, you had to play. The reason I really want to go rook e5 is just to get my knight to g4 and just like try my best to survive, even though it probably didn't survive anyway. Right. Maybe what he was thinking was that after rook e5, white would have played takes, takes, rook takes f7. And even queen a1, I just played king c2. Maybe go up the board? I don't know. Like, well, I'm trying to understand rook f8. f4? He's stopping rook e5. That is true. And if you take, then queen takes. Yeah, this looks horrible. Do you see any move here? Just so bad. Like, you can't even go rook b8 takes b3, because if you take on b3, then rook g8 check, followed by rook 1 to g7 will be checkmate. So, yeah. I don't even see a move. Oh, this is such a bad position. Um, because I can't, don't even have rook e5 bailout anymore. Right. Now I'm just, I'm just, well, I'm just I just feel like the position's locked me. I think you, could, you have to take and play rook e5, it's the only way. But then you definitely wish your rook was an e5 to start with, right? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Yikes. Because now, rook e5, I can maybe play queen g3. Or queen f4, right? Just one of those. Yeah, exactly. Queen f4 just threatens a much better mate. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I think he's just drawn dead here. Looks so, queen g5, king b1. What's he up to? Queen d5. Queen d5, you could probably take it and win, but you can just go like queen g3 again. Yeah, queen g3 looks like the move. Threatening rook h7 followed by queen g7 mate. Yeah, this is just going to be checkmate on the board. So we'll stay here because this... Oh, and it's already 8 to 5 mosquitoes. So after we see this game, we don't have yeah. to look at their match anymore because the mosquitoes are going to beat the migrants. Queen g3 and there's nothing here. Rook h7 is a threat. Rook g8 is a threat. Resignation occurs. Wow, what a game. Taking out MBL when uh, the team pretty much did their job on other boards as well. But, you know, you can't ever expect, you know, anyone on your team to just beat MVL on demand. So that's, that's a huge point. Well, bye-bye migraines, right? 9-5 yeah. mosquitoes. So let's move on to the next match. That's the Bears and the Snowballs. Yeah, this one, um, we got the final matches underway. Burger Burgers playing uh, Dimitri Collars. We have Ina Agris playing Raphael Laganov. And who are the other the other matches? Oh, yeah, Bilo Do. Um, Kirill Alexienko is playing Leon Mons. And yeah. then we have the big match on top, York Meyer against Nicholas uh, Hushenbeck. Okay, I'm just pulling up all the games here. So you tell me where you want us to go and... Well, Georg Meyer's game, if we start with that one, uh, it's just such a Georg Meyer game. <laughs> Every single game I see of Georg Meyer's, I'm just like, this is Georg Meyer's game. Like, he, yeah. he doesn't really surprise you often, and when he does, I feel like it goes wrong for him. Yeah. So he yeah, just yeah. sticks to his, like, typical repertoire and scores really good results, so good on him. Right now, his rook's on c7, hitting that knight on d7. Knight can't move because bishop on e7's hanging. His next move might be rook a1 to c1. Slightly better. Just slightly better. Just uncomfortable for black. So I guess rook f d8 is the move here. Because that way I can try to go rook a c8 and just start trading some rooks. But maybe yeah, rook, rook f d8 is logical. But rook f d8, rook a c1, I can't, like, even if I go rook a c8, I'm not threatening to take on c7 because bishop c7 will be a nice little. Uh, I can tell you I've just lost an enormous amount of games to Georg Meyer in positions like this online. Like oh, just, so have I. We, just we, a disgusting amount. Yeah, we've, we've both been there. Wait a second. Also, isn't queen a4 a threat? 
Yes, queen a4, and even that brings knight b3 into the picture. Well, you're knight on d7, how are you going to protect that? It's this like is a rook fd8, queen a4. Bishop, ooh, bishop c6, I just double, bishop b5, but looks sketchy. Yeah, I mean, if you try to do something like this, maybe. No, then I have to have a4 there after bishop b5. It just takes... En passant, then rook takes d7, right? There's a pin here. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, so what we were saying was queen a4 here, right? It's so surprising to me sometimes that it's these positions where Georg Meyer feels like he's putting a small, like, push on you, like a little bit of pressure, but then, like, a move later, you, like, hang a piece or you're lost. You're right. Like, Wait, what? <laughs> maybe, what just happened? Maybe queen a4 was met by g5. So let's just put it on the board. Queen a4, g5, rook takes c7, bishop c6. Right, or e5, even. But yes, one of those two moves looks... Oh, right, e5 was also not. But I, my point is, after bishop c6, I force you to trade rooks, and then I take your bishop on f4, and I'm out of the woods here. So everything is... Yeah, no, that's nice. g5 played now. Definitely looks like the right move. So yeah. bishop e3? Bishop e3, bishop d6. Just kick that rook out. Right, but then is that sort of like part of his thing? He just pulls back and says, okay, your g-pawn's hanging and continue from there? Or is there even a sacrifice there? Um, hmm. So bishop e3, bishop d6. Yeah, maybe I can sack the exchange and take g5. Or just, like you said, retreat the rook. Yeah, maybe that's right. actually just the way to go. And at the very least, you've forced your opponent to commit uh, kind of a kingside atrocity, right? Just like... yeah. That pawn would love to be back on g7, just play h6 and be calm, but For sure. couldn't do, get away with that. Hmm. Yeah, not. I guess bishop e3, just be calm and carry on. Mm -hmm. How are, are the teammates being calmer than this game? Uh, I think so. So we've got the. Uh, uh, in a aggress by the way, is actually up an entire piece. And has this Lagunao guy been doing pretty well? He, he has. and let, I, I can't remember his last round result, but I know his first two were very, very good. He, he drew and then he won against uh, Georg Meyer and then Alex Sienko. Okay, well, let me... Yeah, so he, was, he started off super well. It's very true, and I don't know how he last round either, but I imagine this was not the result he was looking for when playing... But look at move 14. He goes knight takes e5, knight e4, and it's like he just doesn't calculate properly because, or maybe he's just in serious trouble here, but it's like knight c6. Basically, you're taking a pawn. Black plays the same move, knight c3, but he's taking, she's taking a knight. And then <laughs> it's just like you're just down a piece. There's nothing happening. Here. Right, that is just a clean piece. What? Nah, it almost looks like a total oversight, not like a miscalculation, but like he actually thought that he's going toe for toe with pieces the whole calculation. Yeah, that's a very weird thing to happen because if you play knight e4, bishop e5, okay, black looks very good here. b2 pawns hanging, pawn d4, but playing knight takes uh, c6 is just. Yeah, so that's actually going into the final. That's the Berlin Bears honestly choking because you'd have to say with the way Rafael Laganov's playing. He's a huge favorite against uh, Ina Agres, who's been getting inconsistent time pressure. And the Berlin Bears are up 7-5. That goes and puts the game at 8-5 if he can win here. But instead, he, he's choking in the final round. And, and Ina might be the, the hero of the team here. Uh, as she is very likely going to bring this to at least 7-6, and, and we'll see what her teammates can do. Yeah, and Lagunau lost to Dimitri Collars in the previous game. So this would be his okay. second straight defeat. Good start, bad finish. Yep. Good start, bad finish. Um, the other games in this match, we have the Burger against uh, Callers. Speaking of Dimitri Callers. Burger, Burger. Is that like a Big Mac or like a double quarter pounder? Like, how does this work if he's Burger, Burger? A Burger, Burger? Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, definitely going to be one of my favorite names. I can tell you that already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Burger, Burger. Yeah, my, one of my favorites is uh, Kamiyanga. Yours is Burger, Burger. <laughs> yes. But right now, I really like Collars' position because yeah. we both have a semi-open file, and it's the bishop file, right? So the C file for white, the F file for black, but the F file is just much more valuable in a position like this. 
Right. Because the bishop on b6 protects c7 very well, and yes, the bishop on e3 protects f2, but at any moment, knight takes e3 will happen, and you will not be happy with the consequences. Right. So let's see. Do I play e5 here for black? I mean, e5 is just so tempting. That's doesn't, true. Doesn't e5 just rip everything open? Yep. <laughs> e5 looks very tough to me. I guess the downside of playing e5 is it gives f5 to your knight, but I'm not sure. I haven't calculated fully to see what happens in, you know, if I just take on d4 there. Yeah, but the thing is, you just take on d4, and then you've got that pin. Uh, that's That's got to be good in the long term. Yeah, I can take on e3. Ugh. Maybe I play d5 after that. Yep. Because I've also got knight b4 coming, coming in. So d5 followed by knight b4, the, the knights lose on f5 as well. Yeah, there's something about this bishop on e3 always being vulnerable to capture makes me feel uncomfortable about Burger Burger's position here. Uh, one thing that he's done um, with rook e to c2 is he's actually making a threat, which is knight h4. Um, I don't know if knight h4, knight e3, like maybe there's some, some tactical way out of it, but it looks like he's sort of eyeballing a knight h4 idea. So that means knight h4 now is possible. So knight h4, knight e3, knight g6, knight d1, knight f8. Right. But then knight f2, or knight takes d4. Like, lots of pieces are hanging. A ton of pieces are hanging. That looks good for black, I think, in that sequence. He is down material temporarily there, but I'm sure that he's going to recoup it, especially after knight d4. Yeah. Or even knight takes f2, like you said, and then bishop takes d4, hits the rook. Yeah, it looks like it's just blasting everything open. And, um... Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at the chat here. Someone said, how about a Montreal poutine? <laughs> Montreal pr pr poutine, yes. <laughs> Do you like poutine? No, I'm not a big fan. I, I did have it when I was in Montreal. I think Montreal is one of the best places to, to get it. Um, so if you're going to try it, it's, it's definitely good to get one in Montreal. But... I'm not a big fan of it. It's, it's like a it's a late night after the club type of food, but some people actually eat it, you know, just in a restaurant. And that's that's a little too much. Do you have to revoke your citizenship um, now that you said that? Well, I uh, I've actually been an alien for for a while. I've uh, been very outspoken about this, so you know we're just not on good terms with the uh, Canadian Gov. Okay, that's fair. Also, I see the real Greco in the chat. So the other day, Amon, I had a beard. And like I was all disheveled, and I kind of did it on purpose, you know. But then I was getting a lot of flack in the chat about how I, you know, what was going on. Even Hikaru commented, being like, "Robert, what's with that look, man?" And I was like, "You know, I don't objectify people. I'm just here to commentate. You don't got to talk right. about my looks. We're talking about the chess here, so get out of here." Right. Yeah. Well, if if we weren't allowed to defend our looks, Robert, I don't know if I would be uh, permitted to commentate. No, you're, you're always welcome. Also, MVL just raided us with a party of 359. Hey, and he was, yeah, he was uh, streaming all his, his thoughts and stuff uh, during the, the pro chess matches, which would have been very, very cool to check out. Yeah, I would love to hear his thoughts on that final game because it's not every yeah. day you see MVL lose, especially in such a crushing fashion. So, you know, I can hear about him winning. You know, he can just play me in Blitz and just talk smack to me, but hearing about him losing, you know, would be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Well, welcome everyone from from MBL's uh, stream. Unfortunately, the the Marseille migraines did go down, um, but we're looking at this game now, and he wants he wants some action here. He's giving up the knight on g4, and he wants to play takes on d4 and then d3. Yeah, just trying to get feisty over here, right? Because you move that bishop, f2 will hang, and bishop f2, excuse me, bishop d2, there's d3, follow like queen f2 check, and that bishop hangs. Right. So it looks like this was also perfectly reasonable for collars. Is there knight h5? Uh oh. Yes. <laughs> I mean, definitely one of the first things I calculate, because then it facilitates bishop f4 as well. Knight h5 just looks good. Plain and simple. I don't even see a good response on h5. So, queen e5. 
then you knight h5, queen e5, knight g6. Yeah, I mean, just keep, keep going. Uh, but then, then maybe I play take your bishop. So you're sacking your queen? <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm in uh, Dimitri's shoes here, so I'm pot committed. But yeah, I would guess I would take, take, take f2, and knight takes c5, and try to clean that. But, you know, this is not by design. Yeah, this was weird because I thought that after uh, knight h4, this knight takes e3 move just worked. And instead, he's getting in trouble. Wait, bishop h6. This looks like a very, very subpar version of knight h5. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good way of putting it. It's like you had a very good opportunity to just win the game. And instead of bishop h6, like several moves come to mind. d3 still is an option. Right. I could throw in knight e5 now if I want. I can just play queen takes h6 and take your bishop. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't What's love that move. That, that's one of those moments you would just wish you could take the move back and just play knight h5. Right. Yeah, knight, knight h5 just looks, looked very, very good. Um, it seems to me like Ina Agress is still doing very well, like uh, still up for peace and more or less converting. Um, yeah, and, she's winning. Yeah. So who's left? Meyer and Hushinbeth as well? Uh, Meyer and Hushinbeth, yes. Um, we have uh, Alexienko and Mons. And then uh, the, the burger game that you were just on, and, and then in his game. So those are the four that we're paying very close attention to right now. Yeah, and again, this Hushinbeth position, it looks like you know that G5 move came back to haunt him because he has a normal-looking position without a G-pawn. Right. So yeah, that's... Uh, I think it really worked out. I mean, up a pawn, better minor piece, better, better every piece, really. Yep, these pieces are beautiful. This is a really nice game. So... If we're sort of tallying up here, uh, let's say that we call this one for Jorg Meyer. So Baden Baden wins here. Let's say we call Inna's game for uh, Baden Baden as well. That brings it to 7-7. Seven, seven, and then it comes down to those final two games. So which uh, are the final two? Burger Burger. And what was and the then, other game? Uh, Alexienko Bilodo A. That's that's the game. I think that game between two players that are that are doing uh, I mean Alexienko's not having a great uh, event or, or four games set today, but right. Leon Mons has been doing pretty well for, for Baden Baden. I, I'm not keeping track of his exact score, but I, I, every time I look at his games, he seems to be in a good position. Yeah, he is a two and a half out of three, actually. He drew Meyer yeah. and he beat Agrest and Dimitri Collar, so. Right, so he's doing, he's doing well, and I think this is the, the big game to watch here, because between this and the, the Collar's game, I think that's probably going to decide it as long as everyone converts their, their other positions. Yeah. So this actually game is, these are very tough positions for even for grandmasters to evaluate because yeah. you look at the position and you say, oh, I love white's pawn on d5, and the knight can go to d4, and there's pressure on the f6 pawn. But then you see this pawn on a5 is overextended, and look, the knight b7 move goes right after that pawn. Right. Bishop c8. What was he afraid of with, oh, he's defending a6 from rook a1. Okay, that makes a lot more. I was like, what is that? But it doesn't really defend a6, does it? Because rook a1, your knight can't go back to b7. Yeah, yeah. It's It sort of facilitates knight b3, but then even there, I'm not sure not sure that that's uh, what we would play. These, these ones, like you mentioned, are always tough to evaluate because you look at the pawn on e4, and it's like, okay, backwards pawn, negative. But the knight on f3 means you can never play queen e5 very easily, and the bishop on c2 keeps that pawn defended. And in the long term, white might be playing like g4, king g2, something like that. Um, the d6 pawn is weak, and in general, white has a bit more space. Oh, so I got to take us back to Georg Meyer's game, because Georg, I think his advantage has slipped a bit. Um, uh -oh. The queens have been traded in typical Meyer fashion, but now all of a sudden there's a target for black, this b2 pawn. So white needs to gather quickly with bishop d5, maybe make a move like b3 and go after the f7 pawn, but the knight on e5 is very well placed. So he's going to play knight c4, rook check, and then bishop d5. Right, right. That, that is the option for... But there's actually knight c4, 
If you go rook d8 check, king g7, bishop b5, maybe I could throw a knight d2 check and pick up b2, but I don't want to give up uh, f7. That's the real problem, right? So at the yes. end of that, I have rook d7 hitting f7, and then it's three on one on one side of the board, which is a lone a pawn. And that's what white really wants. But Yeah, not only does white want that, but the bishop as well thrives in those positions where you can like watch the a pawn from d5, but also contribute to the king side. Exactly. So I was wondering, okay, so he went knight c4, which I don't really love, to be honest. Oh, but he's on rook d3 here. Yeah, I'm oh. not sure about this, but I guess it works. Right? How do you get out of it? Because rook d7 is met by knight e5. Right. So maybe there's rook d7, knight e5, king e2. Uh-huh. No, but then you have rook d4. It doesn't actually help you out. Well, yeah, I could uh, play king e2 right now, for example. So king e2, rook d2, check. Yeah. King e1, then rook d4. Uh-huh. So Hushinbeth looks like he's getting out of this. He's sneaking his way out. That's, uh, that's a pretty big result if he can pull this off. Because at some point, you're like, is he sneaking out for a draw, or is he sneaking out for a win? <laughs> I, yeah, I can't imagine him winning this game, but I guess if you, know, you blunder your bishop on d5, then all of a sudden it could be a loss. But okay, if white wants to draw, bishop takes uh, either f7 here or bishop takes c4. Probably bishop takes c4 is the best way Probably to do c4, it. Probably c4, yeah. Take on c4, take on a6, and then... The but it's just that it's a tough decision to make really early on in the calculation that you just have to completely throw away your winning chances. Right. Sometimes you, you, you're stubborn with that, so you play through more moves, and then you don't have the same bailout options. Right. And, and Dimitri Collars, so which team is he on? He's on Baden-Baden, uh, right? Yeah, he's... Uh, yes. He's looks like he's just completely winning with the black pieces now because that bishop takes h6 blunder by our friendly neighbor Steve Berger is right. resulting in a great position for black. Look at this bishop on e3, hitting both rooks, hitting the pawn f4, hitting the queen on g5. I mean, that's the best piece I've ever seen. Yeah, this is... Uh, oof. And the nice thing is, you take the, the pawn on f4 first. Like, you, even if, like, rook d1 or rook takes d3, it's like you grab the pawn first, and then you grab the rook, and then there's even, like, rook f4 at the end. It's a disaster. Right, everything is just sort of hanging here. I mean, it's just... Yikes. So someone just asked about knight b6 instead of knight e5 in the Georg Meyer, Georg Meyer game. And if you have rook d7, knight b6, the problem is that once I take on f7 with check and you make yeah. your move, you have king g6, I have bishop e4 with check, winning the rook on d3. And that's the only way to keep the king in touch with uh, the rook. Um, and even if I didn't have bishop e4 check, I have bishop e6, keeping the bishop protecting the rook, and then I can move my rook afterwards. Although actually... Um, black still has some chances here. It just allows white to escape in a favorable way. What do you think of king g8 after rook takes f7? So like rook d7, knight b6, rook f7, king g8? Kind of incredible, but every check I can take the bishop in a good way. Well, I have bishop a2, right? Oh yeah, I'm not actually threatening anything. That yeah, I can move okay. my bishop away. Yeah, no, okay, then that's that's fair. So he's still, and he's deep in, in, in thought here because he's He's kind of messed it up. Yeah, I mean, there's a Big huge, time. huge save if Hushmet can hold this. Uh, so that's yeah. an Australian. What? No. Uh, okay. Confusing. Anyway, um, so Ina Agrest still is up a piece. She should Taking win. Taking care of business. Dimitri Collars is completely winning with the black pieces here and about to flag his opponent as well. So if his position wasn't winning enough, he's going to win he's on time. He's going to take a full rook. He's going to be threatening mate on f1. It's just game. game so that's game. going to be a tied matchup, right? Because they're down by two. They have two games in the bag. And two, rook f1. Yeah, that's he, the game. It won. There's a checkmate on the back rank with uh, those two rooks. So Collars wins. Ina Agres will win. This he, Georg Meyer thing is going to come back to haunt him. So Georg actually pulled through big time. Yeah, let's check out Bilodeau versus, uh, so that's uh, Leon Mons with black against Kirill Alexenko. Because that yeah. knight is on e6, and it can capture the knight on c5, but I guess black is hoping that once you capture back, ooh, it took on g5, that's just a free pawn. I don't know, f6 falls too? But after f6, knight takes f6. e4? 
No, you can't take on e4 because that, there's mate on f8. Yikes. I take c4, you mean you just play queen takes? Exactly, queen e4 and... Um, then but, rook takes g5. Then they maybe... Just rook e6, rook e6. Yeah. And you couldn't take... Instead of rook takes g5, you can't take on e4 because you can't take a second time with rook f8 mate. That's an interesting move, um, although I'm sure that there's something good for white here. Like Even like queen f5 takes rook g6 there. Wow, that's actually a really sneaky move. So what can you do? So queen f5? Queen f5? Can you just take on g5 with the rook? Rook g6. And then if I, oh, I can't, you want me to take on g6? Is it, okay, because I can't block with queen g7 because the rook on e8 is hanging. Right. And if king h8, you have rook f7, and you're coming down to checkmate me. Right. And if king h8 after rook check, then I'll grab your pawn on h6. And if king h7, I grab g5. Right. Here, this pawn hang. Yep. So how many pawns is white currently up? Two pawns, and we'll probably get at least a third back. Yeah, queen f5 looks very good here. And, and if h takes, just h6, I think. Yeah, yeah. Queen f5, pawn takes, h6, kick your rook away, start a huge attack. At the very least, white will have three pawns for the piece, but it's, yeah. the attack is real too. Um, so Biden, Biden is about to win this match. Yeah, that's the thing. Everything's looking good, um, except... Yeah, no, they are about to win the match. Everyone does what they're supposed to do, unless Georg Meyer loses. That would be crazy. How could Georg possibly lose this game here? Because he's tilted. <laughs> You'd Does have to... get tilted? I don't Is think that so. A thing? I don't think so. No, he doesn't look like someone who would tilt. So they're probably going to draw by repetition. And Georg's just probably passed. just sort of waiting it out for his team. You know, just like exactly. making sure that Inna wins. Inna's up a full rook now. Yeah. So that should... Uh, she's got that one in the bag. Uh, There's nothing better for, for Nicholas in this position either. So that one's going to be a draw. Uh, as, as long as, okay, in is completely winning, not even just like kind of just up a full rook with two pass pawns. So that's yeah. over. And it's kind of uh, down to this one. Do you want to stick with the Alexanko game? Yeah, I have this open because it's, it's sort of complicated here, right? So if you take on e4, Black's idea is to take with a knight on e4 and then take this rook on f But now it's just, ooh, what do we do here? But that end game should still be good for white, right? So like if you... Yeah. Queen e4, knight e4, take g7, take f6, rook f6, I win d6. and Yeah. Looks pretty good. But maybe there's something better. Like queen h5 or something. Yeah, yeah. I was even like, try, trying to get like some h7 to work. <laughs> Does it work? Looks pretty... Uh, I don't, I don't think, think it quite works if rook takes h7. Yeah, and there's always these checks uh, in many, many lines to exchange things for black. Yeah, and Chess Wind had a good question, and it almost works. Rook f8 check looks really good, but you have to remember the knight protects the queen on e4. So you're, yeah. it's a good distractive mo distracting motif, but it doesn't work. Yeah, so this looks like a nice move because there's no like checks to save yourself. Queen e1, queen h4, you just take and take the rook. So queen h5 was indeed played. That looks very strong. This looks like trouble. Yeah, the rook on g7 can't move because if you move it, let's say rook e7, queen g6 check, king h8, rook f8 takes, rook f8 is mate. Um, your back rank is having troubles here. And if you don't move it, well, I'm just going to take your yep. rook. So maybe queen e1, no, queen e1 you block even with rook f1. This move. Uh, what about just pawn takes g7? And then knight takes f6. Knight f6, queen, queen h8, yeah. King f7. Rook takes f6. f6. Yeah. yeah. That's over. Yeah, he this... sees that. So I think he's going to win this game. Georg Meyer did draw officially yep. against uh, Lucian Bates. So that's a draw. And uh, whereas in a, in his game is still not done, but we know that that's a win. So uh, the the Baden-Baden snowballs are actually going to win this match right now. 
This is unbelievable. Yeah, I just look at Inna's game. She's up a rook and three pass pawns. But yeah. K- Kirill Alexenko, he's kind of the hero. He started 0 out of 2, and he won this game, which we were talking about earlier. It was hard to evaluate the position. This position on the board is very easy to evaluate, but earlier it was very unclear. And with checkmate in one move, rook f7, mate wow. on the board. The Baden Baden Snowballs win. They had a, what, three, three and a half to half round there to come back from 7 5. And they started down three and a half half. They were down seven and a half to five and a half, and then they won the last three games there. That's that's incredible. That's that's maybe one of the biggest comebacks. Like to start round one, down three and a half half. Everyone's you know, yeah, there's no nobody in the team chat right who won their game who's like, don't worry guys, we got that. Everyone had a bad result, right? Right. And because uh, even Meyer like drew a lower rated player, so man, to come back from that and even down seven five going into the final round. That's a pretty incredible result of Baden Baden Snowballs. They, they win the Battle of, uh, of Germany and uh, they take <laughs> down the Berlin Bears. And I just uh, clicked on Alejandro Alvarado Diaz's game and he won with the black pieces over Boris Marcosia. So uh, Alejandro Diaz has had a very good day here for Barcelona. That match is wrapped up eight and a half, four and a half in Barcelona's favor. Maybe it's even nine and a half now. So let's okay. focus our attention more so on the Norway Gnomes and the Khan. Um, Blitz streams, right? right? Because that match is still very much undecided. undecided. So Orientari, right. let's start there. With the white pieces, he is white against Maxime Lagarde. Interesting game here. Yeah, and actually, they, uh, Maxime Lagarde is, uh, is a pretty strong, uh, pretty strong blitz and rapid player himself. And they're playing a pretty, pretty topical type of line here. Yeah, white's up a pawn, um, so that's nice. And this H pawn, at some point you might want to start rolling it down the board. And I really like white's position because I'm up a pawn, my king is very safe, uh, black doesn't have any clear path towards counterplay, like there's no d5 breaks here or anything like that. So right. uh, bishop e6 makes a lot of sense, it spies in the a2 pawn. But even if I have to go b3, I'm not concerned because your pieces are very far away from an attack for black. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I, I really like uh, Tari's position here. Isn't knight takes e5 hanging, kind of? Um, maybe not here, but knight five. maybe queen a5 is the response to knight e5. Ooh, but I might just take that knight on c6, though. Oh, right. tr- true. Well, g5's hanging. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. Wait, are you Yeah, right? it's kind of loose, right? With like knight e5, queen a5, so I'm throwing a2, and... Knight takes c6, queen takes a2, king c1, knight takes e4. Exactly. exactly. Nice stuff. Threaten the maid, trying to take this bishop. Like it. He likes it. But wait, what, what about queen a5, though? What about queen a5? I didn't say it was good, I said he liked it. <laughs> I mean, I so bl- now, I bl- we have to, now we have to calculate this. Because I, I blundered for him. And then he did it himself. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're supposed to blunder so he doesn't have to. I don't think he got the memo. So queen a5. Uh, first of all, knight c4 there. Then your queen bishop's king. hanging. g5. Yep. So you don't have like a, there's no bailout option. Once you, once you play knight e5, you're committed to this tactical line, right? Right. So queen a5, knight takes c6, queen takes a2, king c1, knight takes e4. And are we just dead lost? Uh, maybe there's just bishop takes e4. Uh huh. Bishop takes knight f4. Exactly. So maybe I can. Because I am up a piece for white in that line. The rook on b8 is hanging. My knight in the force protected. So maybe right. Tari just calculated this to say, well, at the end of this whole crazy line, I'm the one who is up material. My king isn't that under attack so I can survive and if that's mm-hmm. the case then it's good for white right yeah looks plausible here what about rook h4 at the end of that I'm stubborn okay so you, you want to continue with that line because <laughs> it either works or or uh, Atari seems like he's just doing incredibly well right for rook h4 this is just g3 right oh you're going to take under and h3 rook h2 takes h2 you sneaky. <laughs> I 
I mean, I can even play queen takes h4 there and then, like, take your rook on b8 and just... Right. I have a yeah, million that's pieces. that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> then I can check you on a1, take b2. I can, I can pretend. Yeah, I mean, black definitely has good chances to, like, maybe make a draw there, but I don't see anything more than that. So if you don't go for that, though, are you just accepting that you're just losing pawn after pawn? Are you, are you just taking on e5 and allowing bishop f6? Yeah, but that just looks bad. Well, the, the h2 pawn is hanging at the end of that variation. So knight takes e5, bishop f6, bishop f6, rook f6, rook h2, for example. You're only down one pawn. Your knight is extremely well placed in e5. But then the white knight goes to d4, f4, yeah. and it doesn't and feel very good. Knight d4 looks, looks nasty. So I like Tari's position, and that... Yeah. They need that because they need he's one. He's up on time as well. Yeah, he's up on time, up two pawns temporarily. So how about his teammates? How are they doing for him? Well, we have this game between uh, Christian Stubik Holm um, against Madame DD. Got it. Demiante Cornet. And this one, uh, you've got this pawn all the way up the board on A6. And it's just a matter of like, either this is extremely good and you play A7, Knight B5, and somehow it's a it's a hold for white, or it simply falls in the next couple moves. It's looking more like the second. Although, how do you how do you get that pawn for black? Uh, take and... Rook b6? No, yeah, rook, I guess it But then rook takes d6, take right? And then knight... Oh, maybe you're right. Rook b6, rook d6, then rook takes a6? Yeah, maybe or rook king takes f8. a6. One of these but moves. like rook takes a6, you know, you just take and I have to take with my knight, which is not great. Right, so I maybe throw in with like king of eight first or something like that. Right. Threatening knight e4. This pawn is, well then a7. So I can't let your pawn go to a7. So let's see, okay. What about queen b6? Okay, well he just took. He took. Okay, I'm surprised he's going for that line. Is he taking with the knight? No, no, sorry, there's knight e7 uh, discovery if you do that. So, yeah, rook takes. Gotta be rook takes. Gotta be. And then knight takes. I guess he's just assuming his knight will uh, stop the c-pawn, and then his right. king will just move to the center. But, yeah, white is certainly for choice here. Yeah. At least in the next few moves. If that c-pawn gets blockaded, then black is uh, for choice because that pawn can become a weakness rather than a strength. Exactly. Um, so who else is going on here? We have Ario versus that's a uh, we have Torbjorn Ringdahl Hansen as yep. Black. Oh, what's going on in this game? He seems to be on the much much better side of a rook end game that's about to occur. Yeah, he's supposed to be up a pawn, isn't he? Yeah, pawn plus like interest. The B three pawn is weak. The two rooks controlling the open files it looks like you might get some infiltration as Black as well. And it's funny how this happened because. Early on, it kind of looked good for white, because white was actually up a pawn and had the two bishops. But then white went bishop d3 and moved 19. And I guess right. ov overlooked that after bishop takes e5, could have taken on c5, took on e5 instead, that f4 was just met by knight takes f4. So I think that was just a blunder by Sebastian right. Schwab. Yeah, knight takes f4 is a very nice move. Yeah, because black's just up a pawn now. So that's looking like a point for the gnomes. Um, if I had to sort of tally things up, what's the score? So they're up, they're up by one right now, six and a half to five and a half. Yep. Six and a half to five and a half, up one point. This would bring them to seven and a half if he can convert this, and and this definitely looks like it will be converted. Um, Tari's game, by the way, has completely gone down that road that we were talking about, which is kind of interesting. Um, knight takes e4, bishop takes, and then he just went for queen a1, queen takes b2, and it's just a complete mess. Yeah, there's no turning back here for black because I could even take this rook on b8. I th this move, queen g3, is a nice defensive move. Not only does that. it attack the bishop on g5, but it protects the c3 square and the entire yeah. third rank. And so now queen c3 check with maybe a perpetual check or some uh, devious intentions will never pan out here. That looks like a great move by, by Tari. Rook b5 covers things, um, and you just can't... It's only one piece, and the position is such a mess here. So wait, it's one piece for one pawn. So black has a pawn for that piece. Of course, yeah. the white king is not thrilled to be on d2. Um, maybe that rook will come to c5 to put pressure on the c2 pawn, thus protected by the bishop on e4. That bishop is great, right? That bishop on e4 is an excellent piece here. 
Yeah, okay. it's fantastic. And so maybe rook b1 is an option for white just to kick that queen out? Because the queen is kind of annoying. Where does the queen go? Probably queen f6. Although maybe I just blundered. Because if I go rook... No, I guess rook b1 works. You want to play bishop f4 there? Yeah, I was thinking it was like bishop f4, queen c3 checks that. But the problem is if I take with the rook, queen c3, I can take on c3. Pawn takes and I have king c1 at the end, just protecting my rook on b1. So I thought I was taking advantage of the fact that there were some... Uh, but I can just take your rook, right? On b1 with my queen instead of queen c3. Oh, whoops. Yep, you can do that. So then I did blunder. So he went queen f6 back. I guess after bishop f4, he's just going to queen takes f4. Queen c3 check. And then, and hit, then oop, and this king was just going to run. C1. Well, king e2, bishop c4 maybe. Right. So, king so maybe c he was going king c1, queen a3, king d1. Ugh. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> like barely holding in there. But okay, the game yeah. is queen f6, king d1. And so the question is, is black just dead lost? Or, ooh, rook h4. Because the rook on f1 is now on priest, so there's, there's some issues. He just put himself in a pin. Like he disconnected his own rooks. He played king d1, by the way, incredibly quickly. Yep. But this is one of those positions where white is either just completely winning or about to lose because like, you are up a piece, but it's just one pawn, for a pawn, one pawn, but now the knight in f4 is, how do you protect it? Yeah. Did he just lose that knight? <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's kind of crazy. Okay, so bishop d3 protects the rook and attacks the rook on b5. So it's a little multi-purpose move here. Man. So bishop g4 check is an option, just in case. Rook like, g4. What's, what's the, the body count here on that? So it's still a piece for a pawn. Right. And so if you're black, how do you regain? You got to take this knight, right? Well, I was thinking, do I throw rook g4 in first? Or do I, okay, it took it right away. Rook g4 was interesting. So Although rook g4, maybe there was some knight. Knight h5. Knight takes e6 or something. Yeah. So it took right, right away. So queen g8 check. Got to be. And then king d7. Yeah. And then bishop takes or... I'm so scared about my king getting made it on D. I know. I, it feels like it's just bishop takes and black just like pawn takes. and Right. It's like, where's your attack coming from? Knight B8 check? Do I just move my king to C7? or? Well, then, e... then you have knight A6 check. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Maybe I should do that instead of bishop takes B5. I oh, know, but then rook takes B8. Because remember, at the end of all these lines, there's bishop g4 coming and probably like a force mate. So you're not actually taking my queen because your queen on f6 is hanging. So maybe I could take on b5 first if need be. So like, what if I... No, that doesn't work. Never mind. I was like, what if I take on b5, you go a takes b5, and then you go rook takes b4, but you always have like queen a1 check and stuff like that. And like, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. getting, it's getting wild. Yeah, Bishop really G4 sure. is gonna, this game, by the way, is is like by far the the craziest. This game it might decide the match because Johann Solomon is down a pawn against Matthew Cornet, so that's looking like a potential point for the blitz streams here. Um, it's not not significant yet, still a lot of work to do in that game for Cornet, but he's definitely on the better side of things. Yeah, I mean, so Cornet up a pawn. He's a little bit tied down to the a7 pawn, but. Yeah, Solomon, so wait, okay, so the gnomes are up six and a half, five and a half. So all these games kind of can go either way, it feels like, except for the Ringdahl Hansen game that's totally winning for black now. Um, just He's just pushing his pawns. Yeah, no, that game's, that, that game's over for sure. I'm looking at the cornet, the, the Demiante cornet game. Okay, that's... Uh, the Demonte Cornet. Yep. Um, C6. Now Knight C5. I was assuming was the idea, and it kind of looks like how do you how do you get your rook out? Maybe Rook B5. Right, but then Rook takes uh, Knight, and then just Rook C7, and Black's on the better side of things. Right. Still should be a draw, but yeah, Black is definitely the happy camper here. 
So let's see. Is knight to me rook c7? And then you're going to, you know, you can't go king d8. Well, maybe just repeat is what I mean. That yeah. Is, yeah. That might just be a repetition there. That's a really funky repetition. Yeah. This game might just be a draw. I'm trying to think. Can I somehow... Do you play rook c7, knight a6, rook c8? I was like, can I go knight b5 here? But it doesn't make a difference. Like knight b5, you take on b7, I go knight c7 check, you just move your king and... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, not quite. Maybe, Maybe rook c7, knight a6, rook c8. That might be worth a shot to go knight d6 and try to get this pawn. But it just always feels like it's too much to calculate. You know, like the white king is so far away, it's you're bound to pick up that pawn. Right. She's, she went rook c7, and she is on the block... No, the blitz streams. They were the blockbusters last year. They're the blitz yes. streams this year. Confusing me because they have the same exact logo. Uh, but okay, so she needs to hopefully win this game for a team. Oh, she went knight b5 now. That's clever. That's really clever because if you take on c7, I take with my knight and I fork your king and your rook. And if rook b8, rook b7. No, rook or b8, knight, knight d6. d6. Yeah. yeah. So that got would... rook d8. But rook d8, then rook a7. All looks good for for her. Wow, that was awesome. Very cool move. So what what can Black do here? I don't even see a good move. Because King D eight, of course, you lose F seven. King F eight, you're running away from the pass pawn, which means I can make a move like Rook to B seven, and then try to put Rook B six and something like that. Well, this looks great. Oh, yeah, Knight B five is a a stunner. That looks really really good. So now Rook A seven, and it's almost a forced win. I think it is a force win, right? You can't stop my C pawn from rolling. Let's see, knight b4, no. Yeah, this is winning, completely yeah, winning. Yeah, because I always have, even if you play rook d1, I always have rook a8 check, rook d8 check if you play king b7, so. So that's a huge win for... That's gonna be a point for the blitz streams um, if she converts that. And then Tari's game is just madness. Uh, they went down that exact line we talked about. Oh, gosh. It went down with a knight b8 check and then things. Yeah. Like, oh, there's no rook a1 mate because the queen on f6 yeah, covered exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. So he's just trying to perpetual, but it's obviously not going to happen. The king's going to escape to the king side. I think Tari is going to lose this one as well. And honestly, this looks like the gnomes may be going down. Uh, yeah. In that final game, who knows who has the advantage? Johan Solomon is... is uh, Ooh, he's actually pressing. He won that pawn on a7. <laughs> oh, a nice tactic. Rook takes d7, queen takes b8 check, and then you take this rook on d7. So right now, it looks like Johan Solomon pressing for the gnomes. So the gnomes Oof. are up one. but They're in good position now. But Corn uh, De Monte Cornet has just won. So I just he pulled up the won. final position. After nice. rook, uh, knight b5, rook d8, rook a7, c7, and just got a queen. And that's all she Knight B5 was a really nice move. Yeah, that actually is one of my candidates for like move of the week or kind of position of the week. It was really nice. So another game yeah. just ended. Who was that? That was uh, Torborn Ringdahl Hansen just finishing off that, that Rook end game uh, that we knew was winning. Gotcha. So that's a point for the Gnomes. And Johan Solomon just won complete miscalculation. Oh, by... boy. What was that? What was he even planning after Rook takes D7, by the way? I have no... Queen e1, queen e4, some draw that I don't even see. Yeah, some attempt at a draw, but instead queen b1 check covers the back rank. This rook's hanging. So that is... That's Yo another point for the gnomes. That's the match, isn't it? Did they get the match? Is that eight and a half for them? Yeah. Yes, that because... Should, uh, that Ringdale should be the match. Yep. Because Tari is going to lose this position, but I don't think it matters because of what we just saw. That's crazy. That's checkmate in one. Checkmate in one. Yep. Queen d2. Do you think I'll see it? He's thinking. He found <laughs> it. Wow, what a way wow. to end this week of you know matches here. That's the that's a very close match too. Eight and a half to seven and a half it finishes. And it all came down to that game. But Matthew Cornette really uh, let it slip there because he was up a pawn and it looked like okay, White had that pawn on a6, a little bit tricky, but I didn't expect him to to just go down there. Yeah, that was that was a shocking way to uh, to lose that game because if we just scroll back here, since this is the end of the round, 
Like right. black was up a pawn. Yes, white had the more advanced queenside pawn. You know, the rook on the seventh rank is really annoying here. But yeah. you know, when queen d6 move is played, like you can capture this on d6 probably, and then just try to kind of hold for a draw. Uh, many of these end games where you know you trade one, you need to trade one pair of rooks and then make a draw that way. But perhaps he's yeah. worried about the consequences here and play this with queen a5 instead of allowing any sort of trade. Um, yeah. So here comes the ambulance. As soon as this game is over, the match is over, the ambulance has come for the blitz. You clean up, yeah. Because here, that rook is lost. Wow. Wow. I'm on, I don't so even know what, what to was, say. What was that on the day? That was the mosquitoes beat the migraines. I guess one of the more, more memorable things from that match was MVL losing in the final round um, to, a, to a pretty nice game from Valdris Bowman, who he might be racking up uh, quite the uh, top 10 scalps in the pro league. Yeah, he's got a nice trophy collection from the Pro Chess League, right? He's just got, uh, he's got uh, Magnus, he's got MVL. I'm sure he won some other games last year that I don't remember. So right. good on him. And maybe an MVP candidate for this week. I don't know how, he, I don't remember how he did in his other games. But when you right. beat Maxime vachet le and lead your team to victory, you have to be in the discussion for uh, most valuable player for that week. Definitely. Um, Baden-Baden is, I don't know if there's a specific prize for this, but comeback of the week i mean that that was incredible to see them rally after you mentioned three and a half half down in the very first round and then going into the final round down seven five and uh pretty much everyone came came through yep and i just checked spoman went four and oh so he beat bakro he beat mvl i guess he's my easy mvp candidate that's an easy that. easy candidate holy cow that's that's quite impressive yep so four out of four yeah, wow, Amon. I mean, it's been fun, man. I had a great time. Um, yeah, this was, and all the matches were pretty close. Look at those final scores. No one got got even ten points. Uh, no one like you know completely blew out the opposition. Right, which was not the case on Tuesday when some teams were winning like nine and a half, uh, six and a half, and even I think some games were ten and a half points or something like that. So you know. yeah, like like the chess bras, we we got ten and a half points, and and uh, and this one, I think the only one. Barcelona Raptors, they, they did actually win the match, I think, going into the final round. I think they had won beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, but that was the only one. Everything else was down to the wire. The Baden-Baden snowballs, the Berlin Bears, really, really close. And the Norway Gnomes barely uh, eked it out over the, the blitz stream. So, yeah, pretty, pretty close day. A lot of uh, upsets and some really exciting games. Yep, and Commissioner Greg Shahadi says... Two teams won 10 and a half, five and a half. So this was definitely a closer day of matches, uh, at least from the early matches on Tuesday. And I just will show a couple things before logging off here. Let's go yeah. with the, the format. So there are teams from five continents, 32 teams total. The time control, as you just saw, 15 minutes with two second increment. And so that, you know, it's a, a great time control. It's not too long, but it ends up being very fast, especially with all these games going on at the same time. Uh, we get right into the thick of the action super quickly. And then the final four teams will be there for a live uh, playoff, just like last year. The date and location to be announced. Uh, the prizes, first place team, 20 grand. Their moments of the week, MVPs of the week. And there will be uh, battle royales, essentially round robins, um, in play. So a lot of interesting prizes. Here's a look at every single team. Aman, my favorite logo is the Moscow Wizards. I know you're probably partial to your chess bras, but as you see the graphic pulled up here, I love the Moscow Wizards uh, logo for this year's Pro Chess League. Yeah, let me take a look. I'm a bit behind you, so I'm actually going to look at it on the, the website here. Oh, I, I see, I see. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Actually, all the, all the logos have, uh, have something to them. I always thought that the, uh, the Chengdu Pandas is easily the cutest. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because they're so cute, but their team is so vicious. They're so deadly, yeah. It's just you got like some 20, 2780s, right, you know, hanging around there, and then this cute little panda. <laughs> you got Dingley Rand, you got Yu Yang Yi. Um, you know, I got banners for every single division. I can throw those up here. Here's the central division, which we just covered. We saw Diamante uh, Cornet. She thrived um, at the end there. Um, we yeah. saw Georg Meyer. Uh, we did not see Jordan Van Forest because he's about to make his debut in Tata Steel A Group. And we did see right. Arantari lose his final game, but his team went on to victory. So that was good on him. 
um, in the Eastern Division. Saw earlier today some great players there: Nipo, Andraken, Nihal Sarin, etc. Atlantic yeah, some great matches. highlighted by Fabiano Caruana, Anish Giri of Chess Bra fame. Yes, is he actually going to play? That's the thing: is people are like, uh, "Hey, man, congrats! You guys signed Anish Giri." I was like, "Yeah, but for the third year, <laughs> you know, yeah, he hasn't played a game yet, but he's on the roster. We we're just." Booking him, you know, so other teams can't get a hold of him. Yeah, and speaking of, you know, very, like, calm-looking people, but very vicious, both Carissa Yip and a Wonder Liang. Carissa Yip beat the number one player, Domchenko, yesterday, 26-75 FIDE. So she uh, pulled yeah. off a great upset of her own. And then, of course, the Pacific Division, we were talking about Ding Li Ren, the Mighty Pandas. We, you see Sam Shanklin representing the Mechanics, Mame Jarv for the Hackers, Nakamura for the Sluggers, Jeffrey Zhang for the... Dallas what a Destiny. Crazy division. Yeah, Andrew Tang for the Blizzard, not to mention John Bartholomew. So, so many good divisions, so many good players. And, um, well, Aman, I'm ready to wrap this up. So, any final thoughts for our loving, faithful audience? Well, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun today, Robert. I think we had some really close matches, like we were saying, closer than a lot of the other divisions. So, we were kind of uh, spoiled today. And, you know, I think the Pro Chess League is where you see a lot of, like, crazy board fours like come into their own and all of a sudden you find out wow this guy's actually like really really good so i'm probably going to be paying attention to the board fours as they continue to impress and, and cause upsets in the league but uh otherwise it was a pleasure uh commentating with you uh robert for what i think is probably the first time and uh you know thanks to everyone for for watching and, and keep following the coverage because it's a it's going to be a really exciting year yep First time, hopefully not the last time. I had a blast, but uh, well, bid everyone a nice little goodbye here. And I think Hikaru, that's a GM Hikaru over there on Twitch, is, is streaming. So see you, everybody. We'll be back soon for more commentary. But for now, enjoy Hikaru Nakamura. Bye, guys.